What's up everyone, this is Sebe. Just got a few things to say before we get into the actual cast segment. In the next couple weeks, there will be a brand new intro jingle for all future episodes. Also, if you've been enjoying the podcast and want to support it, you can now subscribe directly through YouTube membership or on Patreon for just $2, $5, or $10 a month. Every pledge is greatly appreciated and helps me continue to do what I love. Links are found in the description. Thank you, and now here's my conversation with King Condor. All right, welcome to the Save Cast number 138 with King Condor. King Condor, how are we doing this? It is so early for you right now. Is this like your normal waking hours? Um, no, I'm normally, I'm on demon hours. I, I pretty much live on American time. It's 1.42 a.m. for me right now, but <laughs> yeah, this is normal. Okay, yeah. Well, so how, <laughs> how long has it been since you've been on those demon hours? <laughs> um well like how long i've been yeah like how, down at these, yeah yeah how um, long like uh how, like how many years at this point is it years uh, at, i want to say yeah, <laughs> yeah two, two and a half years but it, it's been really bad the past like eight months because i used to do like streams so i'll, I'll stream for like the americans at the start of the week then stream for the aussies at the end of the week mm. um and then i just thought fuck that i'd cut the aussies out and now i just stream <laughs> american hours a week because it's just easier to then like switching my schedule halfway through the week every week Man, okay, so I need to ask this as well because I've I've been on those demon hours before, and yeah. uh, uh, but what what inevitably always happens for me is I start sleeping like twice, even sometimes three times a day. Like I'll have like little yeah. segments of sleep, like three hours here, three hours there, three hours yeah, there. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a cheeky six hour nap like halfway through the day sometimes. <laughs> um, it's it, it's pretty bad. Oh, just, if I don't have my son, I am in full demon hours. So it's just it's yeah, it's really bad. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've I've been there. It's <clears throat> it's fun though. Like it's fun until I don't know. It's like those like nighttime hours, like those late night hours, and you're just like, God damn it! Like I don't feel normal. Like I don't know. Yeah. It's, it like sort of catches up with you eventually. Like I was on demon hours for about three years. When I was streaming. Yeah, it just it just like you get to the point where I, I'll sit. I'll be like up at eight o'clock at night when I wake up, and then I'll be like. Did I just waste the whole day? Then I'm like, well, not really, because I don't have to, like, do anything. I'm just going to go play RuneScape and, <laughs> like, go live. So, yeah, fuck it. Then I'll stay up till 8 in the morning and go to bed, like, unless I need to leave the house. And, yeah. And, yeah, still getting over that hump. But, yeah, it's it's good at the same time. Well, that's that's good to hear. Um, how's uh, So you stream exclusively on YouTube, correct? Yes. Yeah. And did you used to stream on Twitch? Yeah, I um I started originally just doing like just YouTube videos and then people wanted me to stream. So I started streaming on Twitch. Uh I can't tell you what year, probably 2020 or something I think I first started. I did that for about 6 months and then I like stopped content creation just for like my sorry, I'm just drinking Pepsi so I'm burping. I'm drinking um, Coke. So Oh, hell yeah, dude. Wait, wait, wait. On the wait. edge of your table. Yeah, <laughs> at very edge, yep. yeah. It'll it won't drop. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um yeah, so I, I started, I think I did Twitch for about six months and then I took a break from creation because I had some like personal stuff I needed to sort out, um, like moving house and uh, like relationships. So I was working overtime. Then I came back when I got my shit together and I did like YouTube and Twitch at the same time and Facebook, but that was a, a mistake. And I just found YouTube was more like engaging at that time and I had the channel memberships and they were really popping off and... I just the, the reception was a lot nicer so i decided to just kind of keep doing youtube and then when i got to the point that i could go full time i kind of just said fuck it we'll do youtube like it was growing at a good rate and it was affecting my youtube channel really positively as well and twitch was kind of just uh stagnant mm. um so i just yeah I, I knew it was a bit of a risk because not many people do youtube streaming especially full time especially in the runescape uh, community so it's kind of like a like you become the black sheep of that that sort of um that that corner of the the streaming industry but i thought fuck it i'll uh bite the pillow and, and see what happens and honestly it's turned out like more more than more than great to be honest I, i'm i'm overwhelmed with the results over the past i've been full-time for two and a half years now now i think 
Hell yeah. Doing just full-time YouTube streaming. And yet it's been fucking, it's been great, man. That's really cool. And it is kind of a shame that it, it, the community really does perceive it that way. I think, I think the tides are changing a, a slight bit where it comes yep. to like YouTube streamers. But yeah, there was, there was a time where like if you streamed on YouTube, it was either like you're banned from every other platform or like yep. you're just yeah, it was like, like what, what the are fuck you are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I was just like, yeah, I, I, I'm thinking, I always try to think bigger picture. And when I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to not get a fucking job tomorrow. Basically, I want to stay alive for as long, <laughs> like stay a content creator as long as I can. And yeah. I just thought, why not do YouTube and just see how it goes? And yeah, it's paid off. And they have like, they have their their pros and cons from Twitch, of course. Um, and I think YouTube's gotten better over the years. It's just I wish they would move quicker with their live streaming stuff. Um, but yeah, for sure. Yeah, the, the, it I, seems... I enjoy the creative freedom. Like, okay, so I will say you're one of the mm. only people I'm subscribed to on YouTube that even goes live. So oh, yeah. if you're live, Thank I mean, you. it's just like you're the only, like it just it will always put you at the top of the list that you're live. So yep. there is yep. something to be said for that, especially like in the OSRS community. Like if you're, who else in the YouTube section streams that's around like your level or higher? Like, is there anybody um, like, significant? Chaos, Chaos does it quite a bit. I think he might even do it full time as well. I'm not sure. Um, but he, he does uh, quite a bit of YouTube streaming and 25 Buttholes does it a fair bit as well. Oh, yeah. I, I thought both of them guys doing it. Yeah. I used uh, yeah, I, I, this is absolutely nothing against 25 Buttholes, but uh, there, I think there was like some video that came out and I just unsubscribed at some point. I was just like, <laughs> I can't, I, I just can't anymore. But I was subscribed to him for quite a few, uh, quite a bit. And yeah, he, he uh, that, you know, that, that happens some, yeah. you know, creators, that's the, that's the risk and that's the risk you take being online in that space so yeah no for sure and people i mean I, trust me i have last month actually in like september when i uploaded that the, my hot takes <laughs> there was this yep. there was a what like a one day actually it was like over the span of two days where i literally lost like 50 subscribers and i could see yep. it <laughs> <laughs> like yeah okay. yeah yeah when you see that happening like oh fuck yeah but, but it, it, it bounces back pretty much quickly yeah it, it really does in yeah. fact it's it's one of those things where it's like they, pro they probably weren't you know meant to be yeah, my subscribers really anyway. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly those subs yeah that's it yeah and and sometimes i'm a little bit cautious about like what i'm uploading because when I see another creator that I'm sub to start just uploading a bunch of random shit, yeah. I will generally just unsubscribe. Like I'm just like, okay, like this, you're flooding my inbox basically. Yeah. So, and um, it's really nothing against their content or them as a person. It's just like, there's too much that I'm just not interested in. Yeah. It's just me uploading fucking like five videos a week. And it's just me ripping shit from my stream. Like I, <laughs> I, I'm a very lazy content creator. I don't put any effort into my videos. You, I you haven't really both. ever like, you I don't, both. yeah, <laughs> fuck writing a script, fuck, like, caring about <laughs> half of the content that's in there. It's very lazy editing. Um, Listen. And, like, yeah. Th there, is, there is a niche that I think both mm -hmm. you and me, Phil, and some others, where it's just, like, the talking game. It's just, like, yep. talk and just shoot the shit like have a good time and it's not yeah. like you're you're not trying to create anything artistic or anything it's just like i just want to talk about the game and play the game and just yeah. have a good time with the boys no and i agree that that's important and i think there needs to be creators like that and so you know I, this is a little bit of a, like a coping mechanism for me because i really don't i put very little yeah. effort into my stuff like i try i definitely try and there's some videos yep. that like I will put some effort into it, but like the videos I put effort into it never pay dividends. Yeah, it's just it's like all flat. Yeah, it's this, not worth it. Like I I had one video where I spent literally a hundred hours doing hard clues, and I would record every single hard clue step there was in the game, oh, and I that. went super super in depth because I was like, okay, this is gonna be like a great resource, you know, for people that and people were like begging for it, like, oh, like I can't wait for this. Yep. Uploaded it within like the first week, it had like 5,000 views. <laughs> and then, like, yeah. then it just <laughs> capped. I'm like, yeah. okay. Oh, cool. Worth it. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's not worth it. Like, to be honest, uh, this might be a bit of a hot take, but I don't think it's. Um, I, I've paid for. I, I do almost all my thumbnails myself. I've paid for thumbnails and artwork at uh, like um, animations in the past. Mm. And this is no like discredit to the artists in the RuneScape community, especially. It's not their work that's shit. 
I just don't think it's worth personally for me. It's not worth investing money into that because it it doesn't seem to make that much of a difference on my videos. Like, I could well, have a really good thumbnail, or I could just make something shitty in Photoshop, and it's really just the the title is really the the thing that gets you gets people clicking more, and then the like the controversy behind it, obviously related to what I upload. But I I just don't think paying for thumbnails is worth it half the time. I just got a template and I just copy paste shit. It's just way easier. Yeah, I'm I'm the same. I I do my own mm. thumbnails, and I mean you're also, <laughs> I mean it's like spray paint. It's like putting like gold over a piece of shit. I mean it's not like yeah, to like you know. It. <laughs> That's it. You're just polishing turds, dude. <laughs> I know. So you might as well just that's have it. like it all budget, because then it seems like oh, yeah. this is all relatively, you know, just like the budget format. That's yeah. It. If, if I had some fucking like settled thumbnails, and then it's just me rambling about some shit, like okay, this is just such a waste. Yeah. Well, a good example I use is Bodhi. I think Bodhi does it right. And if people ask me like, oh, if they want tips on things, I'll pull, I'll pull up his channel now just so I can confirm. Mm -hmm. I think Bodhi is the perfect example of someone who just does fuck all on YouTube <laughs> yep. and just wins. Like his thumbnail, it, it's fucking thumbnails are just pictures of the Grand Exchange. And that's, and his editing, it, like his editing's lazy as shit. Like it's, yeah. I think there was one video where his, it was like completely backwards. And that's all you need to do. That's was, not even yeah. bad. That's not a problem. That's how you win, man. Like just why put all this effort and time and money into a video when you just upload, just smash it together make it watchable keep like you know you're if you're gonna voice over have the enthusiasm or whatever and just fucking send it like it, it just works so well yeah. that it's just not worth it in, uh, uploading high high end content half the time in my opinion i think obviously it varies some people do make it with that like it's a it doesn't work for everyone but i think it for the most uh for the most part it's just not worth it i think for a lot of people yeah, there's definitely two sides. And I will say, like, it's nice having Bodhi on the team ramble side, like, just, like, make whatever. Yeah. Because then it, like, kind of, uh, I don't know, validates us a little bit more. Yeah, So absolutely. But, yeah, shout out to Bodhi because, like, you, you'll you see his thumbnail. And it's just, like, a literal <laughs> screenshot of, like, what he did in the video. And <laughs> you know it's going to be a banger video. It's just like, okay, like, this yeah. is... This is you know not, he's getting shit done. Yeah, exactly. So that's... <laughs> and, and I will say as well, it's nice building from scratch something that you know you're not gonna have to like years down the line be like oh my god i gotta upkeep this i always bring up the example yep. of uh caveman only he basically burnt out so hard out of creating youtube videos because he would put so much effort into his early ones like mm -hmm. so much time so much effort so much perfection and then when he stopped doing that like his viewers noticed like the you know the decline in the just time yep. he would put into it. And so he was like losing it, it, in his mind. I don't know if it was actually happening, but like in his mind, he's like, I have way too much pressure to upkeep this kind of quality. And you I don't want to do it. And it's like people get pissed if you lose the standard, but it's not worth putting that much effort into the yeah. video. Because the other thing is if, you, if you've got like a 12 minute video in a series like that, it's likely that you've got like two hours plus of footage that you're just at least that you're shifting through probably even more. Just like you're trying to find mm -hmm. the right content to clip together. It's just there. I tried doing that. The amount of times I've tried doing a series, I um, I tried to do like a, I think a Shattered Relics series, a Trailblazer series. I tried doing the Hardcore Group Iron Man series. I tried doing my current Hardcore I'm playing. I did a series on that. I got to episode 20 and I've just gone, I can't be fucked. I'm, I'm going to try to revamp it again in another way. I'm like, it's just, I can't be bothered, man. It's yeah. Just, it, yeah, I'd rather play the game and stream it. So it's some people can do it though. I just don't have that that sort of motive, and I, d I also don't feel like I need a series to stay relevant with my content as well. So because um, I like again, this is no shade to people that do YouTube series, but I feel like a lot of people have a niche where like you have a a snowflake series and that's your YouTube channel, and if you try to just do something on your main or you try to do something that's different to that series, it just doesn't bring the same audience and that can be demotivating. And that's just like, that's the way that the cookie crumbles uh, for some people, unfortunately. So it feels good to be able to um, make whatever content I want. Like I'll do a tier list weekly where I just ramble off shit and people don't agree with half the, the tier list, but they still come and watch them because well, they want to see what dumb shit I say, basically. Yeah. So yeah, I think it really helps. 
Yeah, it, it would be a little bit different if my passion was like video production or like I yep. love editing because like you see people like Settled and Jimmy and yeah, like those guys yeah. and like they are creating art and they love mm -hmm. that. Like they don't they, yep. if if it it wouldn't even have to be RuneScape. It just happened to be RuneScape that they were kind of passionate in the beginning. But mm -hmm. like they are just demons when it comes to just production. Like they want to create something beautiful and it yep. works for them because now, I mean, dude settled uploads like once a month or two and yep. he'll get a banger sponsorship that pays him, you know, five figures mm -hmm. and he just like, okay, like he's good. So he can, he can afford to do it once a month, you know? And, and yeah. And he then has the time and the talent, you know, exactly. And, but it, but it didn't start like that. Like he had to put no. in the hours, not getting, as much money but now he's at like just like the most cush position ever where yep you literally just upload like six times a year <laughs> and you're, and yep. you're good and you're fucking sweet just people are gonna come and he even gets on the youtube trending page which is just that's that's nuts especially for runescape that's that's, that's crazy no, only he can do that yeah, yeah. and then you got the per this is the guy with the perfect balance of both solo mission he puts in yeah just mm -hmm. significantly less effort than Settle yeah. or Jimmy or any of those guys. Like it, it, yeah. it, it is. It feels very reminiscent to a Bodhi video. Yeah. But he's mastered it. Where I, I don't know. There's just something hype about a solo mission video dropping. Yeah. So I mean now, the montages that he has in his videos, like that's yeah. probably the main part. And they, and he's got that down easy. Like you just record it once, you set it up, and then you just put it in all your videos, and then you're sweet. Like yeah, he's it's, yeah he's, he's, got that he's down golden. Good. And and he gets mm -hmm. a sponsorship every video. Like he yep. he literally told me like he will not even upload unless he gets a sponsorship. And now he's just created yeah. a separate channel where he does like kind of ramble esque shit because he doesn't yep. want to make his other channel look uh, bad. But Bodhi does the opposite. Bodhi every single thing that Bodhi's ever uploaded he just up uploads it on one channel and it doesn't seem to have negatively yeah. affected him at all. So yeah, that's what I decided to do as well. My mate was telling me I should make a second channel. Um, mm -hmm to spit my content up but i was like nah fuck that that means i gotta build it again and like convince people to come over i just if i'm live streaming on the channel anyway so it's probably different because i do that but i figure just having one channel is probably the best way to do it these days because you can partition your channel now if you go to your your channel you can categorize it all if you needed to mm -hmm. and put everything in playlists so i i decided to I, I had a second channel very briefly but i just was like nah fuck that Yes, you just put too much effort into one anyway. Exactly. And second channels mainly are for those looking for sponsorships. At least that's what Solo yep. Mission was telling me. Uh, yeah. He's like, if he were to upload just random stuff, it just affects how the sponsorships see him. Yep. It's like, okay. look at your analytics won't look as strong. Exactly. With weaker videos. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> well, cool. Um, so what is? how do you... What do you do on RuneScape? Like, what do you enjoy about the game? What have you been up to? Uh, Let's hear it. Um, good question. I, I've recently started my first, well, my first serious hardcore Iron Man. I started, uh, I want to say, three months ago. Um, no one thought that I would even survive like 1200 total level. I'm sitting at 1811, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, but I used to, up, up until this point, I played Group Iron Man on the day of release. Like, we, we planned for it, like, a year in advance for Group Iron when it came out. Me and the four guys I'm with. And that was my first proper Iron Man experience outside of uh, leagues. So I was always playing mains, just raiding and doing, like, in-game content. And as soon as I picked up the Iron Man, the Group Iron, it just, like... I was always team fuck Iron Man. I kind of still am sometimes when I see them talk in-game, but... Yeah. Soon, like as soon as I started playing the game and I got sucked into it, I my main, I I I I PK my main if I want to, and I hold money on it, and that's about it. Like I don't have any time for that account. It's just it's changed my life. So I've I've become an, an Iron Man guy for sure, and that's all I've been doing, man. I just play Iron Man, I progress to end game, and then go live. <laughs> that's about it. Like I don't do anything special to be honest. It's just raiding, lots of raiding. That's cool. When I can, at least. Yeah. What's the goal with raiding right now? Like, what are you hunting for? Um, on the gim, um, we're looking for a shadow. It's the only mega rare we don't have at the moment. Mm. Um, and we're definitely due, and we're like four purples um, overdue a shadow, I think now. Okay. Um, but for the hardcore, I'm preparing. So I've, I've got a subathon I'm doing. I'm starting this weekend, and if we get to day nine, I'm doing hardcore tob. Oh, sorry. Yeah, taking the hardcore to tob. Sorry. So. 
I need to... I'm trying to get a whip before then. I've just hit 80 slow. I'm about to hit 81. So I'm trying to get a whip before then at least. And I mean, if I'm super sweaty, I could probably push to a trident. But that new set has really changed the game for me. Otherwise, just Chambers of Zarek and hoping I can pull Ancestral and the Tebow because I've got an Elder Maul and that's about it. So yeah, it's just... It's a lot of bashing my head against the wall for drops now, just relying on RNG and not dying in the process. Damn, good luck. And good yeah. luck. Have, yeah. you, have you done these like long subathons before? Uh, I've done one where it was capped to a week at the start of the year. Okay. Um, and like during it, I hated it. I wanted to fucking kill myself. That was, it was just so, it's painful waking up and <laughs> yeah, just bet. everyone, you're like you're, the clock got down to like 10 seconds. And we all agreed not to extend the clock. And oh, then no. my friend got a Snapchat from someone in the chat and then came and, it, but he didn't know we were agreeing not to donate. Yeah. And then he threw like a hundred bucks down and I was like, are you serious? And it lasted another two days. And it was just like, <laughs> why? Um, I, don't, I mean, you know, oh yeah, you're crying, you get money for it or whatever, but it, it, it's, it's no, painful. It's bad, doing. Yeah, yeah. It fucking sucks. But then as soon as it ended, I was like, yeah, I could do that again for sure. Um, <laughs> so this one's uncapped this time. Jesus um, Christ! I kind of planned it a little bit better, and um, hopefully it goes uh, at, at least at least a week. That'd be good. Um, it would just be p people seem really hyped for it, so yeah, I'm, I'm really really keen for that. But otherwise, I normally do like a 24 hour stream once a month to try and like uh, let those that can't see my streams because they can't make it. A lot of people complain that they can't make it, but uh, they they try to watch the the videos after. I just try to do a 24 hour stream once a month so that they can come to the stream at least and say hi. So um, yeah, I'm I'm used to just staying up late and sitting in the chair for far too long. But so I, I'm not mentally prepared for this one. So I'm it's, assuming yeah. you're not going to TwitchCon, correct? Like you're planning? No, this. no. Okay. No, no. Jesus, no, man, no. uncapped. Yeah. You got to be careful with yeah. that because yeah, those I've never done an uncapped. I've done a 27 and a half hour just stream straight. Yep. Where yep. I was just killing Corp the whole entire time. And yeah, it was it was not a good time. Like by the end, like yeah, people that were donating, I I like I literally started like holding grudges. I was like, stop, yeah. like just I, fucking. It was stop. just like it was if they donated, it was like a fuck you, and then they're like, oh, funny, do it again. I'm like, no, it's like it's yeah. not fun. I, I hate it. It's yeah. funny how that works. I know it sounds like such like uh, people listening are gonna think we're such fucking pussies, but like <laughs> when you're when you're in that state of just tired and just like I just want to, yeah, fucking lay on my bed for three hours and not just just it's an endurance test, else. man. It really yeah. is. the The other one is when people like like during a subathon, if you're going over twenty four hours, I did I did a seventy two hour stream once actually, where I almost didn't sleep. And I was at the like 65, 67 hour mark. And what I was like, fuck, I dude. I was fucked on stream. I could not do anything. So I was like, I'm going to have a quick nap. I laid down for two hours. Worst mistake of my life. Because being awake for that long and then you only sleep for two hours, I woke up and I was even worse. But I, I, I stayed up for the last like four hours or something. And then like oh. my sleep schedule was just fucked. And then people during the subathon are like, are you really going to sleep during the subathon? That's pussy shit. Like, Cunt. Have you ever tried? Have you tried staying away for seven days straight? Like, no, that's the point. Like, <laughs> it's it's not like it is just not doable, man. Yeah. It's not smart. That, I'm trying you to think of like yourself. like the, those those classics of um, Mr. No Sleep and Alfie doing those like 100 oh, hour God. sessions. Like, Mr. Yeah. No Sleep was hallucinating. I mean, he was just like out yeah, of his will. mind. Yeah, yeah. You just you won't be making any sense. So you'll just be talking like to yourself, and the chat's just like. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> that shit's like that can cause permanent brain damage. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the, you can uh, you can get really sick from it. Okay, there was like some random article or something that I saw on like a YouTube short or some thing I read on Twitter. Some guy that like hasn't slept in like multiple years. Some guy from like a different country, like some. It's, I want to say like. I don't know, somewhere in like Japan or something. Like some guy like yeah. that just doesn't sleep. I'm like, that's not real, right? I, it can't be. Like you just you'd get fucked. Is he micro? Your body would just shut down. Would it yeah, not? that's got to be napping or something. Yeah, so that was really confusing. Like I, I'm like just thinking, like, is it possible that there's an anomaly, an anomaly of like just 
you're not sleeping, but your body has somehow adapted to just kind of sleeping while you're awake in a sense. I don't know what it is, but if somebody listening is on YouTube comments right now and you have any info on that, I'm very curious because I thought if you didn't sleep for like five days, you're like actually going to die. Yeah, it's probably like not counting deep sleep or something, but it's, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you, you, you can't go a week. I don't think that's physically possible. Yeah. Oh, is it? A, uh, oh, actually, no. I, I, I think that. I've I think I've heard of somebody going like yeah, like two hundred hours or something, like the world record of not sleeping. Just something. The stupid. longest recorded time without sleep is two hundred sixty four hours or eleven days. <sighs> Fuck that, dude. Oh, Jesus. The dude. the worst part is too is just when you like you'll sleep for like twelve hours, and you're like sweet twelve hours of sleep. You wake up and then within the hour you're like you need to go back to bed like you just can't stay awake your body's just like shit not not enough gotta go again and it's just oh my god Dude, yeah it's uncomfortable the catch-up of trying to just mm -hmm. catch up on the sleep has got to be miserable i mean you gotta feel yeah. sick i want to yeah. i even had alfie on the cast i should have talked to him about that i don't think i ever addressed that like just how did it feel after a hundred goddamn hours i think he did the hunt the yeah. full hundred right or something I, I'm not entirely sure, yeah, but just... he, he sounds like the sort of guy that would do that at least. Okay. Are they on drugs when they do that? Like, do you... To stay up for four days, I mean, you got to have taken yeah. something, right? I think, just, I think just staying awake is the drug, right, eventually. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I never did anything myself on the 72-hour stream. Yeah. I just kept my eyes open, drank Pepsi Max, and... To me, it was it was just a mental thing. I was like, nah, I've got this. Stay Jesus, awake. And then dude. It just, yeah, it just fucks me, man. After twenty seven, after those twenty seven hours, I did. I was mm. so fucked. I had drinking yeah. like three. I feel like drinking caffeine actually makes it way worse because I yeah, drank three does. monsters and I felt like hell. Yep, yeah. and then, but it's just your heart rate. It's just fucking increasing. You're sitting there like this didn't help. <laughs> Everything just hurts more. Yeah. Yeah, but there's sometimes like you just need it. Like you, you almost, it's like a placebo almost. Like if I drink yeah. this caffeine somehow, I'll just accept it as a boost. Yeah, Jesus. Um, cool. So uh, lately, uh, you know, I just recently subscribed to your channel and I've um, obviously wanted to have you on the cast just to talk about things going on in the game. And I've, Jeez. I appreciate the the couple videos you've had of uh, shouting out my content. I appreciate it, oh, Loki. Cool. It's it's cool. I, I appreciate you not getting uh, shitty with me over. And I, I know I haven't agreed with every take you've had in there, but some people just like spit the dummy. Um, and I, I think I, I respect that you're that. Yeah, you you fucking hit me up and was like, come on the podcast. I was like, hell yeah, let's uh, let's do it. Yeah. No, it's it, it's refreshing. I, I will say. It's refreshing listening to your content because one, like we disagree on so many things, but mm. while you're watching like my video and, uh, you know, just reacting to it, it, it doesn't feel like there's anything beyond the surface level of just like the games take, like my takes on the game. It's not like you're, there's no personal attacks. There's no anything like yeah. that. And so it, I was pleasantly surprised and it, it you know it's just like okay this is cool like we could probably actually talk and just have a a reasonable chat about stuff yeah so that's cool that's that's the that's how you got to do it to be honest like you i know my my delivery and a lot of shit i say is very um it, it can be very like daunting mostly because of just the the attitude that i have when i talk and obviously like the the profanity and all that so people do feel like they're being attacked but it's really just Maybe I'm just shit with people. I don't know, but yeah, it's it's all just like it's. I, I try to keep it as professional as possible. Um, I, I try not to make things personal or, or or take things personally because, um, it's it's all about the content at the end of the day. Like that's my main goal is just keep making content people want to watch. And if it's a hot topic to talk about, then yeah, like Odablock did a video. He uploaded a video like two hours ago. Yeah, and I just I just watched stream. it actually. Yeah, he mentioned me in it and people came to the stream like, oh, Odalock mentioned you. I was like, cool, that's free content for me. Let's react. Yeah. I'll upload it later. Cheers for the views. So like, yeah. let's actually talk about that because he was he was talking about the Adicon tweet that was originally posted saying... Yes. So Adicon, for those listening, made a tweet 
basically said, you know what? I'm actually not going to misquote him at all. So I'm going to just go to his Twitter and just make sure I'm getting mm-hmm. this right. So he said, there's so there's been so much discourse about skilling updates in forestry and mining over the last month. So let's add some more to it. Every skill should have a about 20k XP per hour idle method. I don't see how this would harm the competitive uh, skillers or devalue 99s personally. And then, of course, it's 158,000 impressions. That's yeah, a that's a lot. That yeah, it's a lot. Tons. <laughs> yeah. Um, so mm. it's, it's funny how, like, you can literally just make a tweet. Like, if you're in that sphere, <laughs> you just post anything about, like, Duke mining or Scar Essence or just anything, yeah. and you just shoot up. Yeah, I had a few that were, like, mm. close to 100K. Um, yeah. So, obviously, you know, there's a lot of people that have problems with that and then there's a lot of people that are completely for it so you obviously made some tweets and i did see the ones on odablock's video of you just saying like yeah it's, it, it seems as though you fully agree but I yeah wanna... i actually yeah. reacted to his because he made a video on this tweet as well um and i've i've watched it on stream and i've got it uploaded i just haven't released it yet i was going to wait until later in the week um but yeah, I went through and, and reacted to basically him talking about it and the, the tweets he read out. And I I am, yeah, 100% in support of what he says. And I, I support the, the shooting stars um, and the, the changes they've made to it 100%. Personally, I, I, don't, I don't believe that skilling is being like devalued because, because of it. Like, mm-hmm. because it's a choice to, to, to do the skilling, right? Like, who cares if someone else is achieving the same goal or the, the same end goal as you at a slower rate that's afk especially with a skill like mining i don't feel like mining has like a whole lot of um variety in terms of like because people want big xp drops at the end of the day right like, right like casual players the majority of the player base I'd, I'd imagine uh would feel better about mining if they got more xp like mother mine for example probably would be more popular and less less of a problem for people if they were getting like double the XP rate, but you can't do that. Obviously that's just like not logical. So I, I just think having a, a, like if something isn't going to give you big XP, then having a low XP AFK method seems to be the acceptable alternative for a lot of players. And I mean, I love mining the shooting stars. I could, I could AFK that shit all day. The problem is, is if I AFK it all day, I don't do anything else in the account. So there's also that to consider <laughs> like people are worried. You're not doing it. Like you're just mining. It's yeah. like, yeah, these people are just mining for 20k an hour. They're not raiding now. They're not doing fishing. They're not doing Nightmare Zone. They're not doing their Slayer. So their account is now halted by a 20k XP an hour fucking shooting star method. Mm-hmm. That the, the problem with the Duke thing, on the other hand, was that that was being done while they're sleeping, right? So that was like you're adding now time that they're, they're playing because they're asleep and they're getting six hours of extra like XP gains. So it's not a lot of XP, but it's six extra hours a night that people wouldn't typically be getting so i just figured the fact that shooting stars is cutting into your grind that you're just replacing like people are replacing more xp that they'd be getting elsewhere with a a pretty shitty method to to train mining to be honest like shitty in terms of xp rates yeah for sure it's one of those things where like and yeah i'm in full agreement of duke mining having been just way too busted like duke mining itself wasn't busted it's people holding something on their space bar that's busted and being able yeah, to yeah because there was hours. no profit to come out of it at the end of the day which i mean mining isn't super profitable anyway but like there was absolutely zero profit and <laughs> except that ultimate iron they got pk or did not pk sorry that fucking died there and lost how does, bill or whatever it was. <laughs> how, so what ex, what actually happened there? Like, are you not able to reclaim <laughs> your shit? I, I don't know. I, I've never played Ultimate Iron Man. I still never fully understand the death mechanics of that. But yeah. I'm assuming he had death piled somewhere. So dying inside Duke, um, he would have had 15 minutes, I think, or, or something to claim his stuff back. But because he was asleep, it despawned. I think that's what happened. Oh, shit. Could so on wrong, UIM, if lost. you don't go back in 15 minutes, does it not even go to death's coffer? Or death's office? I don't think so because they're holding it somewhere else, right? Oh, so because he? Why would you? Why would you do that though? Like, why? Why would you have gravestoned in the first place? I, I, I feel like you can hold all your stuff anyway. I, I I have no clue. I'm not sure how how it works. I'm oh, pretty that sure is... it was just his his cat hit his mouse, and that was it. 
though. Like, you oh, know, that is put, put the fucking cat down at that point. I'm like, you, <laughs> holy shit! <laughs> like, it's a joke. It's yeah, a joke. Yeah, just for those <laughs> listening. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that's brutal. Like, what would you do yep. in that situation? Do you just quit? Um, re- did, did he? I rebuild uh, or what is he doing does is there any info on what he chose I to have do no clue what he's doing he was front page ultimate iron man i think he was ranked 24 at the time um he was like going for 200 mil of mining xp i guess so that's even funnier um to be honest if, if i were in that situation i would only rebuild if i was doing what i do which is streaming and content creation otherwise i would just quit like fuck that yeah it would be it- one hell of a bit one hell of a series to rebuild it but otherwise, not. Yeah, fuck, fuck that. Yeah, fuck that. Now, if you still are addicted to RuneScape, just make a new account. Something different. Don't do a UIM yeah. again. Like, just, yeah, just fuck fucking that. try to enjoy the game some other way. <laughs> At least that's my... T- I, Dude, I am actually... I don't know how people play UIM. Especially, like, when they become endgame. I'm like, how have you even managed to get to this point? Like, are you actually I, enjoying yeah. this? It's. It, I think it, it. It's. It must be a completely different drug compared to normal Iron Man. Because I mean, at first I, I thought the same about just Iron Man. I was like, this is like, how could you enjoy that? And then you play it, and then it's like, okay, well now I can't play my main because if I pull a Tebow on my main, I'm gonna fucking hate myself. So that has to stay there. But then doing an Ultimate Iron Man is just a, another level of just fuckery. I don't know how to explain it, man. I yeah, couldn't do it. it I, I guess for me, I just think like the one of the most enjoyable parts of Iron Man is like collecting stuff and you don't get that dopamine on a UIM. UIM is just like you're no. dropping shit. Like that's got to yep. feel awful. Yeah. You're alking like Desert Treasure 2 drops because you're looking for one item. You get a vestige. Oh, got to alk it. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. Like, hell, yeah. hell no. While so, everyone watches you like, yeah. I'll just share my brief take on the Adicon yeah. tweet because yep. he's advocating for like every skill it sounds like and maybe he's changed his opinion but at least his initial tweet i think his intention was that he wants there to be basically a shooting star method for every skill yeah where it's you click once gain xp for 20 minutes or you know 15 to 20 minutes without clicking again that is what i at least in my head that's what i am thinking idle means because he didn't say an afk method he says idle so my yeah. concern with that is one inevitably there is a um, slippery slope that pretty much it, it just happens like it, it's happened with the game over time like there's that sense of like okay like things have been this way for a while can we get something better so the slippery slope in my opinion is first of all I'm already against there being an idle method for every single skill anyway, but I, you know for a fact in three years it's going to be like double the XP on on some of them at least. Like they're just they're going to up it because people get addicted to it. And my concern is that like OSRS was never meant to be an idle game. I, there's been a few things that have almost just made it idle in the beginning days of old school, like Nightmare Zone and Splashing, which I've always been against. So yeah, same. And again, this like this is my opinion on the game. So everybody has a differing opinion. I just think personally, if we go down the route of making this game idle, it kind of devalues the core identity of what this game is. And in turn, I don't know, just like it, it just doesn't feel right for the game to go down that route. Now, I am totally for AFK methods. So the difference between idle and AFK is like just clicking once and having you gain XP continuously beyond like five minutes. I think five minutes generally is the way I kind of gauge if it's AFK or idle. There's like great methods like AFK and Karambons with a fish barrel. I think that's like the the pinnacle of like perfection when it comes to AFK methods. It's like you you yeah. have a very predictable four and a half minutes of pure fishing, and then you go bank. You got to do a few clicks. You got to go back. You know you got to actually put some effort in, and then you go back for four and a half minutes and get a fish again. And you know your inventory fills up. Like there's just more engagement, and you can't just sit there for twenty minutes straight. So I I don't know. I guess that's I'm okay, and I'm I remain open minded to maybe 
press that boundary a little bit higher, but I get concerned because we already saw the logout timer increase from five minutes to 25 minutes. And who knows, yeah. if, you know, in the next year or two, that's just going to turn into like two hours or just six hours. Like there is no logout timer. So it's like, I get nervous with certain methods that will be beyond, I don't know, 15 yeah. minutes. So. I, I, I understand that. The, my, my pet peeve with the logout timer is I have a group I am member who has it at 25 minutes and then we'll just have all the gear on him and then fuck off for 25 <laughs> minutes. So I've got to sit there and wait for him to fucking <laughs> auto log. Um, <laughs> that, that's, that's my, my annoyance with it. But um, I think I, 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 you brought up a good point with um, the nightmare zone and the splashing. Cause I don't like nightmare zoning and I don't like splashing. I'll use nightmare zone and I'll go like the most points per hour method yeah. and I'll do it for my abuse. That's it. And I, I don't encourage people to AFK Nightmare Zone. But I think the the reason I probably feel that way is because there are more fun um, and like decent XP per hour methods that you can do with combat that make it like it's it, it's more like... I, I don't see the, I guess, fulfillment in doing Nightmare Zone when I can just train Slayer at the same time. Exactly. Or I, like it, you're basically where, being more inefficient in a sense. Yeah. Because like, there is That's a skill it. completely attached to combat already, Slayer. Yeah. So seeing it with mining, like, could the problem with mining be the fact that if there was a better alternative, like, I, I, do, I think it's a, it's a bit of a joke that unless you're doing like three ticking gems or, or granite in mining, um, obviously you have volcanic mine mm -hmm. outside of that you're not really benefiting much it, like, there's not really an xp per hour method that's obviously high enough that people are accepting as, yeah. as a decent method because people afk mother load mine like i said but it's not nearly as good as like afk yew trees or something like that with wood cutting um, yeah no no 100 and this is something that was mentioned like and you even made that video mentioning me in it and it's like mining definitely needs an upgrade like there's yeah. we just need to go into this goddamn content and just figure out how to balance it right like there's clearly problems so if the yeah. team would just not spend you know half a year on whatever the hell they did with forestry and just actually spend it on time like just balancing some of this content like we could have some very very healthy good updates in this game very quickly like things that don't even involve creating new content like just literally go yeah. in make some tweaks like if we could just get a like a community of people like a little council that's that have done a lot of mother load mine and just reach out to them and be like what do you hate uh, what do you hate <laughs> about mother load mine and then they say everything they hate about it like genuinely like the things that are just annoying about that content and then address yeah. it and make it better like that's Oh, like well, it I had me. a tweet um, a week ago that I, I kind of am trying to... I'm not trying to rally for it, but I would love to see it. I I don't know what, what you think of this. It's got, it got like 260 likes, so I was pretty happy with it on Twitter. It was buffing Zolcano's XP to like a, a random number. I, I said 60k XP an hour. Because it it's currently 13k XP an hour. Mm -hmm. I know it's, it's designed for money, right? But yeah. If it was looked at as more like it, like Temporos is looked at for fishing, it's not the best XP per hour, but people do Temporos. It's rewarding. Mm -hmm. Zolcano has that risk, and obviously it's locked behind Soat, so there's like requirements to just dive in there rather than for Temporos and Winnetod. But if that, yeah. I think if Zolcano gave like a decent, like more than Mubbleload Mine XP per hour, you, you'd see a lot more people there. Now, that's obviously going to cause a problem with worlds and too mm -hmm. many people being in worlds. But then like... What if they also added the ability to instance Zolcano through the chat channel? So you can go in there with like three to five people that you wanted to go with. Didn't matter what world you were on. And you guys can just do Zolcano as a team there. That obviously does mean going with friends, but then you could also do open worlds or whatever as well. But just like the content's already there. They might have to redesign it if you're going to bring more people to the content. But well, it's Zol dangerous content that doesn't really offer much XP wise. Yeah. Okay, Zolcano, first of all, needs to be looked at entirely. Like, it is so stupid 
that they have forced this three phase mechanic in this fight. Like you'll have literally 20 people in one Zolcano yep. and they will still force you to stop mining at like the, you know, 640 yeah, HP and then yeah. like the 240 That's HP. It. Like what the fuck is this? Like stop. Yep. Nobody wants this. Let it be a static timer where if you have 20 people in that you one phase it like boom you're done like it it got sat the fuck down yeah. and cuz that would actually create more balance and a little bit more like um just variety in how you fight it like you could still do solos you could do the three mans and that maybe that would be a three yeah. down but you have that potential to make it a two down or a one down if you have enough players like that is something that bothers me to no end and yep even if they scale it as well, like scale it based on people that are in the room at the time it starts, that then allows for people to mass without it being like just being one ticked all the time. But it's like scaled to the point that maybe it is a two or three down consistently, maybe efficiently a two down. The, if you've got like regards to party size provided, you're all doing the right thing. That could work. I'm generally against scaling stuff, though, because what we saw yeah. with Nightmare, at least, I don't know if you ever did like a lot of normal Nightmare yeah, yeah. But they did that whole scaling method where every single team size felt the like the exact same fight. And it just got dull. It's like, why can't we have the variety of sending 80 people into a nightmare mass and just fucking that boss up? I mean, that would be so much fun to go in there, yeah. have it have no scaling, and just like five second these phases. Like, that would be so <laughs> much. People would have a blast doing that. Like, we really would. It would. That sounds a lot more. I mean, that would probably work better PVM though, don't you think? Like, because then you like look at the way Temporos and Gardens of Rift. I mean, mm -hmm. Gardens of Rift is a fucking joke, regardless of team size. But yeah. like Temporos is scaled to team size, uh, which then means Volcano would need to be instanced if you wanted to scale it to team size, of course. But like that just well, I, I just like. I mean, they could always bring new well, content in, like. Yeah. This this would be the cool part about it because if you just allowed it to not be scaled and had Zolcano set at something and just had actual static timers per phase, then yeah. if you did a solo Zolcano, you would get way more XP per hour. Like, and and I'm actually pro buffing Zolcano. I don't know about 60k yep. XP an hour. I think that's too high. But yep. if it was 30k, because right now it's like what 12k? Uh, yeah, like 13 and a half. Yeah, that's that horrible. Like, now. I would be okay if it was like right at the state and the reason i i don't want it to be too highly buffed is because it is very rewarding and there's a pet and mm -hmm. there's like other there's just other things going on but i'd be okay with if it was like 30 to 35k um mining yep. xp per hour and then yep. if you were to do like a solo for example you would be getting more like 45k and if you were doing like a a 20 man volcano be more like maybe 20k xp an hour because you're there's a little bit more of like that grace period where you're just kind of sitting, standing around. Yeah, that that that's probably a, a better way to look at it as well. Like, yeah, I just threw sixty k out there as like a random number, mm -hmm. just to like, um, see I mean, what people thought. But yeah, it makes sense. And the thing is, if we were to address the only reason I'm saying a lower number right now is because other pieces of content have not been upgraded. Yeah. So. Zolcano shooting to 60k and like that becomes better than like you know just sitting at iron ore which you know you could make an argument like that would be fair but i mean yeah. we need to address motherload mine like that place is dog shit like i'm sorry like we need to fix it we could buff the xp rates i mentioned that thing of you know as you progress in the content you have other further unlocks that make the content just better just slightly over time um, yeah. they could do the same thing with Volcano even like you just have something in there like the more you do it you know there's some sort of upgrade that's happening with you like maybe like a double what's it called like the, the, the longer you spend in like the room or the instance you just get like a buff yeah like up a certain amount of KC. yeah just something. So, something that's going on now i don't know because i haven't really thought about Volcano to be honest because i i do see that more as like a pvm encounter rather than the skilling yep. thing and i think that's what they intended it to be um blast mine could see some love Zol uh volcanic mine could see some love and can we what are your thoughts have you heard of my take on the gnome cube i doubt you've done much tick manipulation if any but like i i I don't dabble in tick manipulation too much. I understand the, the, the idea of the gnome cube. I'm pretty sure I've heard you talk about it a fair bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's... I, I mean, I don't, I don't fuck with tick manipulation too much when it comes to skilling. So I don't really have an opinion on whether it would be too much or too little, but it, I, 
personally don't see a problem with it. Yeah, and okay, so like the Gnome Cube for those, uh, pretty much anyone listening has heard any other cast or ramble I've made that yeah. already knows what I'm talking about. But it's basically like instead of knife log or herb tar, you just click once and it's something that doesn't randomly turn into like a, a crossbow shaft yeah. if you mess it up. It's just, no, it's there. And it doesn't need to be a Gnome Cube. It could come out organically as any other item in the game, um, like a holiday item or something. But the whole purpose is to just reduce wrist strain like people there are some people that never want to dabble in tick manipulation and that is completely fine you can play the game however the hell you want but there are literally people that would like to progress their account faster and these tick manipulation methods gen genuinely are hard on the wrist long hours like people that don't have iron wrists or are going to just sit through the pain because they're insanely dedicated to the game like people want to be able to do these methods but it's just such a nuisance like it's actually just tedious as fuck so if we could just get to the point where we introduce this and then in the future we could even go beyond that and just come out with like a method that's you're keeping the engagement i think one of my so one of my favorite methods and the thing that i uploaded recently was like the four tick 3g which is like you sitting at three rocks and all you do is every every four ticks you just click on the slasher spark and then click on the next rock it's just like this continue cycle it's so goddamn easy and it's like great xp per hour it's like 110k if you got like 99 and it's just one of those things like if we had more of this where but imagine that method now but you're actually profiting like imagine you didn't have to drop the shit like you, you're actually yeah you know banking one mil per hour or something like people would actually find a reason to do it like, okay like this is actually nice and you're gonna you know be engaged with that now it's not to say everybody needs to do it but i feel like if we could just get to that point where we're making these super tedious just obnoxious methods just slightly more bearable we're on the right path and then i don't know what i guess the thing that really really concerns me is this uh, feeling like the game just needs to become idle like I, I what i get scared of is like something that's like oh here's here's a 30k xp or 25k xp uh rune crafting method where you just click once every 25 minutes and you're just getting rune crafting and then here's one for agility and here's one for slayer and here's what it's like what are we doing like is this just how the game's gonna go like where we just you just click once go away from the computer and everyone just maxes like with uh, you just spending like a total of like I don't know, 5,000 clicks total, <laughs> like max an account. Like, I know it would take a long time, but like, do we want to just make it a mobile game where you just shove your phone in your pocket and you, you're actually not even engaging in the game anymore? So we need to address I mean, the fact yeah. that skills are not fun. We got to increase the rewards. We got to increase the enjoyment and the engagement of these methods. And yeah. I, I, I think it wouldn't be too bad to have both at the end of the day, like, at, like from a development, I guess, well, less of a, a developer standpoint, more of a, I guess, Jagex standpoint, if the shit's AFK -able and people are going to want to play the game or if you can just the shooting star, you got more interacting, more interactive players, more, well, logged in players, should I say, more people playing the game, everything looks better, right? Because everyone's going to go shooting stars rather than logging out because they don't want to do mining. Yeah. But, um, I, I think that it just, I think if there's a, I think it just needs to be uh, like the, the pe people don't want to do three ticking granite and even like gem rocks or even iron ore because it, there's zero reward to it. There was zero reward to Duke as well, but it was no effort. So like if there were, if it felt more rewarding to put this extra effort into your skills, you might get a few more people uh, on board with it um yeah imagine it, imagine yeah. a world where like granite was on top of 130k xp per hour you're also like profiting 1.5 mil if, or if you were making big money from it i think a lot more people would do it or be willing to learn it people still there are still players that don't want to fucking touch tick manipulation like totally that. that's with, totally with fine pole, um which then something like your your no no cube can help try bridge that gap for some people um but and, then yeah alternatively having a, a more afk lower xp method that we uh, need the variety like you're right we need both yeah. 
I, need... I think it's better to have both than just one or the other. And they need to be balanced. Like, it's okay to have mother lo- Like, if mother load mine was 800k GP per hour, something, like, significant, where it's like, I'm doing this, at, you know, I'm saying, like, at 99. Maybe at lower levels, you're not yep. making quite as much. But, like, something where, like, you're actually making progress in the game and... You know, there's always that concern, like, oh, well, then bots will do it. Like, dude, there's bots doing goddamn everything nowadays, and nobody's. Well, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion bots don't affect the economy as much as people say it does. To be honest, that's a bit of a hot take, but yeah, I, I don't think bots are that bad, especially on high ticket items, personally. But you, you sorry, continue. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I think, I think we're all just fully used to just how the economy runs because there is so many yep. goddamn bots. So it's like they have affected yep. the economy. But we're like, eh, whatever. That is the economy at this point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like just, I just wish skilling, like there was more of a reason to do it than just upgrading your level. Like why can't you just have some enjoyment and make some easy profit by doing some nice chill skilling instead? It's just, it's all about like, I hate this, but I got to do it. It's a fucking chore. I'm just going to you know, I'm going to make piss low amounts of GP anyway, so I might as well just do, like, the most brain-dead method and just try to get it over with. And it just feels like this whole thing is just chorescape, and I wish we could just see that. Skilling could be fun, but we have, to make, we have to make strides, and we have to have honest discussion with the player base on, like, how would these methods become fun? I think a pro- the problem skilling has is... I'll give you an example. Today, um, so... When uh, a while ago I hit 81 mining, I got the mining pet on the hardcore. I was like, cool, I don't need to touch mining anymore unless I need rune ore. I, I didn't want to touch it, but I'm looking at my adamant ore, my adamant bars. I'm like, how the fuck am I going to get bars or bolts? Mm-hmm. And then shooting stars came out. Now I'm nearly, I'm, I'm halfway to 84 mining purely from shooting stars. But today I did two chambers of Xerix runs back to back, and both of them gave me in total 220 adamant ore and i was like fuck yeah that's two that's 2000 bolts done that's awesome and i I, like well that might that seems problematic because now like what's the point of me mining anything but stars until amethyst because i can just get my resources from raids i think it's good that you can get that from raids and pbm content but it's also the problem that skilling has to compete with yeah the enjoyment of pbm but what else do you get from like what 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 do you replace those resources with on the Cox table otherwise. Well, you just... It's, I know it's not a purple, but it's yeah. the little things like Adamant Ore that make me go, oh, I'm happy with that drop. Well, Let's move on. Like, one thing is like, for a lot of these places, you don't even have to adjust how much it shits out. You just got to make mining be better than it. Yes. Like, yeah. why, it, it, yeah. would, it would not break the game if there was a mining method that profited you 1.5 mil GP per hour, even up to 2.5. Like I literally would not have a problem if people spent all day mining an interactive, engaging method where you're generating GP. Like why the fuck? Not? Why? And the thing is, is like me even mentioning that people are instantly like scared. Like people get scared of skilling having profit attached to it. Like we literally the most profitable method right now in skilling is like. I think the top ones that I saw like a month ago are thieving blood shards, thieving yep. crystal shards, and hallowed sepulcher. And all of them are below, they're like all below 2.5 mil GP per hour. Like, so like yeah, the most um, amount of money you're generating from like the highest end skilling methods that are just incredibly tedious and just mind numbing and stupid. I besides really hallowed sepulcher. doing that shit too. Like, yeah. Or yeah, bots. Yeah. Yep. And well, Mod Ash replied yeah, to me on my Zolcano tweet, and he, he suggested that maybe um, if mining had the depletion timer system that woodcutting now has, so, for example, mining iron ore, mm-hmm. mining adamant ore, doesn't deplete after one ore, but depletes after a timer. So uh, that could be... So you could just keep mining the same iron rock, yeah. and you're just getting iron ore, and you're getting it every like tick that you could, or you could be mining adamant ore, kind of like how the up- upstairs mudblood mine works. Yeah, so I'll, I'll I don't just, know if that's a complete fix, but yeah, that's. I'll I'll share my take on that personally. I think yep. that will um, kind of take away from the identity of mining, but there mm-hmm. is, I think, in my opinion, a better solution that still keeps what mining is, and that is to yep. just go in 
and not make it so long to mine a resource. Like sometimes it literally takes 30 seconds to mine one gold ore. Like what yep. the hell is happening? Why couldn't this be two seconds? Why couldn't it kind of should be, especially at like 90 plus? It shouldn't be that fucking they hard. They should, to mine they should be instant. Like yeah. if gold was as consistent as like iron ore, maybe slightly less. Like iron ore is basically 100% success rate at a certain point. And yeah. if gold was 95, 96, like just something really high where you click it and you get the ore, and then the ore respawns before, you know, they take like a minute to respawn. Yeah. It's like, dude, no, yeah, nobody's is, got time for this. It's a bot method. Yeah. No one does that shit except like bots. So if you could. Just, yeah, like if, if you could just change the rocks where, okay, you're mining an Addy rock and it mines within like six seconds, like boom, and then they respawn like boom. I'm just going in this nice thing. I'm generating, you know, let's just say there was a way to, you know, mine like 800 Addy ore an hour at 99. Like that would be great. Like people that need the Addy ore would do it. If you made coal super easy, like if, if coal had the same success rate as uh, iron and you need coal, the best way to do it would be to mine coal now. So now on top of, you know, mining, let's just say 2,000, it would be around 2,000 coal if you could three tick it. Like you're mining yep. 2,000 coal. And on top of that, you're also generating like 90K mining XP an hour. People would be obsessed with that. Like it would feel good to train your mining at that point. Like, oh, I need coal. Let me go mine. And it's really easy. I just click 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 just like those little easy iron methods that have like three rocks next to it like people would not yeah, have a problem it's honestly not not a bad like I, I think adjusting that is definitely like it, it sometimes going to mine adamant and mithril like even if you just have to do one for like a, a like i think you have to do an adamant or for a, an elite clue maybe but if you have to like mine something for a diary even i'm just like mining one myth i'm like why the fuck is this taking so long like it's ridiculous and someone walks up and mines it like from you anyway and i'm like yeah, <laughs> yeah. thanks asshole and then you gotta yeah. wait for it to respond yeah it's just like I, I think it is kind of weird that even at 90 like 85 plus you're still struggling to mine mithril it's so dumb it's it's a bit silly but I, that's honestly not not a bad um a bad way to just fix conventional mining, especially in like the the mining guild where you're trying to get the minerals. Yeah, really yeah. get the minerals. You may as well wait till you're starting amethyst and just AFK it because, like, then there's no effort you've got to put into it. Amethyst exactly. is at 92 though. So. Yeah, no. I yeah. mean, if if they could just really think about okay, these rocks nobody are mining. How do we make it so people are interested and engaged in this? And, and mining these classic rocks like that's all you need to do it's just, it's just such an easy balance yeah so and the thing i'm really against is like i don't want to see mining just become you sit at one rock and you know you spend two minutes there and now you've filled up an inventory like just sitting there like i just feel like that's not believe it or not there is some prestige that comes to mining now shooting stars has kind of eliminated that already but mining used to be like, oh, damn, like you, you're a fucking sweaty nerd. Like you actually got 99 mining. Like you're, that, this, is, this is an impressive skill. I think it's fine to have skills that are more prestigious because they do take more effort. But um, I, I guess. Mining was my first ever 99. Really? I will, I will admit. Yep. I just AFK'd my blood mine for six months and played PUBG. Fucking and gamer. 99 mining. <laughs> it was like many years ago. It was a. Uh... It was a good six months of PUBG. Okay, I'm just looking at this uh, Twitter topic right here, and it just says, how is it possible to consistently have so many bad takes? <laughs> what? Yep. There's, 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 a few, uh, there's a few replies to the thread that were kind of addressing this. So why is it that people say that? I don't know if it's a Twitter thing um, or not. I, I, I'm not very popular in the RuneScape Twitter space. Mostly for my, um, I have no problems calling someone an idiot and telling them to shut up if they say something dumb, and that rubs people the wrong way quite quickly. Hmm. Um, I mean, the, the, I mean, this guy, I don't know who the hell Cheese OSRS is, but I mean, <laughs> he's just someone that doesn't like me. I don't even, if, if you can give me an example of a bad take, I replied almost instantly. If you can give me an example of a bad take, like, go for it. Otherwise, like, what's the point in saying this? Like, He's had 
two days nearly to respond and hasn't said anything. So in my mind, he's just some idiot that doesn't like me. So <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, give, give me a bad take or don't sport. Don't, I, don't I was, talk. I was <laughs> waiting for people to reply with the bad takes because I wanted to cover it, but nobody did. Like, I, I think it's either people don't have an example of a bad take or they're, they're scared. I reckon. I mean, I'm not going to bite, but I, 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 I'm of the opinion that like, I'm probably a pretty in, intimidating character. Well, first of all, anyone anyone that actually posted the tomatoes or the people saying like this guy has somebody bad take, nobody's even gonna listen. None of them are even gonna listen to this. So probably not. No. Yeah. So like the problem is is like I, I want to address to them like why not have given mm. his bad take so we can talk about it, <laughs> but it. no that's one it. did. No, that's it. You know, they just like to be honest. Even like Madam Mage, I know she doesn't like me, but I was like. You know, she said, I've got a few. And I said, you know, put, like, don't just say I've got a few and then do nothing. Fucking say something. Like, yeah, like, I, well, I, like, this is a good opportunity. And I, I feel like, like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure behind closed doors in uh, their own, you know, in their discords and shit, they're all, they're posting the, the, what they don't like about me between each other. But fucking lay it out on, lay it out on Twitter. Yeah. Let's fucking have a, have a discussion about it because... I might have some bad takes, yeah, but I, until I get d presented one and I can't defend it, um, I will just continue to say I don't have any bad takes because that will also piss them off even more. So, fuck it. Yeah, I mean, I, and the thing is, is like, I, I don't do, I don't do like the whole digging and the research of every single guest I've had. Like, I've, mm. I've I remember, um, well, I tried to get cherry on the cast like a year ago and then you know i yep. just got absolutely obliterated in the reply well i guess i didn't but he was it was just like why are you doing this and i was like i don't i don't know what's going on like i just thought this was a normal streamer like and then i started yep. getting a bunch of dms on stuff but it's like i haven't i haven't received anything i haven't seen anything like on the thread anybody dm me like it's just do people just hate you but the thing is is I understand this because I have the same thing going for me where people will just say, oh, fuck Sebe, he's got shit takes. And it's like, whatever it takes, like, what? say something yeah, besides just you have it. bad takes. Like, yeah, they're, just, they're just people that don't like you. But to be honest, like half the, half the time, the people that don't like you are the ones that are bringing the attention to you as well. Like That's another true. person on here, Two Stroke Ty, like he used to be a, a, a viewer of my content actually. And then he went sour when i booted his mate for like selling capes and then I, I don't know what happened after that but you know he's just like this is the dipshit of all people you could have forgotten uh you could have gotten for the video it's like what like do you have any like value to add to this like like what's the point in saying that it's so weird most of the people that don't like you at the end of the day um at least in my experience are people that i don't i don't like to ego people i'm I, i'm not convinced that bigger number makes you a better person on the internet but they're all people that are beneath me no one listens to them like i, I have more people watching my streams and they'll have remembering them when they're dead so i i just look <laughs> at their comment and go you got no no fucking value i don't care like provi provide me with some content so i can make oh content God. out of it or i'm just going to move on like I, like I, I know this was the, this was the perfect opportunity yeah. to do so. I wish, yeah, like, absolutely. I was actually wishing that people would do it. So, well, I wish every day, man. But nothing. If no, no one has yet to uh, even come close to <laughs> having a go, man. Not a single person. So, this is a this is a yeah. um, a request to all those that are listening to this. And if you if you don't like somebody and you have an actual reason. When I have a tweet, like when, when I make the tweet, like just just post it, you know. Especially if it's somebody yeah. like King Condor, that'll actually take it. Like you are, you are literally willing to. You're not like yeah. backing away and like, oh shit, like don't address. I wish this. a motherfucker would, man. I do. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, like everyone that oh watches me, wishes someone would. They're waiting for it, man. Yeah. And I'm not trying to like say that I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll take on anyone or that I'm trying to <laughs> wait for people to pick a fight. But shit, like I can at least make someone. I can make the rest of the people that are watching laugh and then have a good time with it and shit if i get put in my place then i deserve it but i'm see I'm, that's I'm, nice that's, i don't think i will you know but, that's that's good to know it sounds like you're yeah. you're willing to take a defeat if it, that's what it yeah that's what it comes absolutely. To. okay um interesting okay so uh Tao or jo uh, Jono uh says yeah. Sater, can you ask connor when he wait is that your first name yeah 
Oh, yeah. nice to meet you, Connor. I didn't, didn't know that. Is that oh, so like it, it, it? Connor and Condor? Does that like? Yeah, relate? it kind of spins. Yeah, spins off my my actual name. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Uh, when can you ask Connor when he plans on leaving for the pond on the group Hardcore Iron Man? Yeah, I'm in a group hardcore team with Jono, uh, Feb, and yeah, Big Sexy. Um, we're going for page one hardcore game, and I they they're all gaming. They've taken off, and I've been doing I've been fishing Karen Bruns. Um, I just got ninety fishing through basically just Karen Bruns, and uh, I have ninety nine cooking banks, which I'm cooking them all now <laughs> while I play my hardcore. So I've done, I provided them with food and nothing else for the fucking team. Well, I did a bit of LMS at the start for gold, but. Um, yeah, after leagues, I'll I'll knuckle down on the the hardcore game a bit more. I think maybe before that a bit, but okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're waiting for me to get into content. <laughs> okay, I I didn't actually know that he was on your uh, group group hardcore. I've had him yeah, on the cast. We, we started it only. Um, I've got my own group iron team that I've had since day one, and we started this one. I want to say like three or four weeks ago. Okay. Think, yeah, just a new team that uh, we figured we'd try to go for page one before we. Lose our lives, which I already lost the first one to a mugger outside of Lumbridge Castle. I was <laughs> a doing a tier mugger? List. Yeah, oh, I was, I was doing a tier list, so I was like running and I went AFK and I looked over, but just it was it's always at that second you die. It if always is. If I looked is, like two yeah. seconds later, I would have been all right. And I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. So that was, yeah, that's the running meme until we run out of lives at least. Rip. <laughs> okay, Emberius. Em- Emberius? Mm-hmm. asks what type of content do you enjoy making the most and why um i, I want to say uh, can i say going live i think going live because it's just it's it's easy but hard at the same time it, it's not hard but it's like energy it's not as easy yeah you know you it have to maintain that effort. energy mm-hmm. it does um but i also just i love going live i think it's great i've got a really good mildly autistic but really good community that shows up all the time and it's just there's always good content you either have some like pinhead that comes to the chat and can't you know string a sentence together properly criticizing me or we just like like today the past week at least we've been like i don't know anything about nfl for example but like i'll pull up the sports bet and we'll put bets down on nfl and everyone's confident that certain teams are going to win and they just get smashed i'm like what the Mm. fuck is wrong with you guys or we'll watch horse races and it's just like it's just a good time and i just love doing that i think it's great and then we'll react to content i just rip it put it in premiere pro and throw it on on the channel so I, i just think i enjoy making all content really just whatever people want to watch okay uh that's great what are your thoughts on gambling by the way i'm curious um, do you gamble I often? I I realized today more than any other day how often I do gamble. I um in Australia you can you can only sports um like do sports betting at least in my end of Australia you can only do sports betting online unless you go to the casino. Um, but in other states I know they also have like pokies which is like slot machines inside bars and shit. I don't. I, I think it's like it's terrible. It's a terrible like habit to have. But I will do it. I just don't. I don't take big risks with it. I will bet. I'll gamble on UFC pretty much every main event. Um, I'm doing English Premier League at the moment because I'm doing a fantasy football with my family. So I figured, you know, I've got. I'll bet like maybe thirty, forty bucks a week. But I always do like safety betting, so I earn the money back. I try not to go overboard. Um, but I, I, it's hard because I love watching the horse races still, but I don't mm-hmm. want to encourage people to just then get into gambling and start like a, b- a bad habit on someone else but at the same time it's really fun people get in on it but i try i, I don't think i don't know man it's it's a tricky situation yeah because so I think I can you, do you'll so. you'll fully concede like it's a vice but yes it's a vice you enjoy and yeah i've, I've got it under control and i, I could stop anytime i swear i swear i can <laughs> but <laughs> legitimately no, i could that's... um uh, I, yeah. I even set a, a deposit limit, a better deposit limit recently because I was like, just in case, because I am doing it a lot more on stream, I'll set a, a weekly limit that's a lot lower than the standard and just um, take my time with it because I'm not trying to win big, although I do put on ridiculous multis that obviously can't win, but I don't bet big on them. Mm. Um, just trying to have a bit of fun, I see. more or less. So, 
I think it's it's important, but I, I I I mean I haven't said it in a while on the stream. I probably should again, but I also try to encourage that people if they want to, that they they should absolutely reach out. If someone's telling you you got a problem, you should definitely do something about it, or at least speak to someone else about it. Like the people that love you are going to identify your problems before you do, right? Yeah. So you should you know if someone's if you've got a gambling problem, if someone tells you you do, you should probably get some help, even if it's just talk to family members or whatever. But yeah, for sure. It's just tough yeah. because, um, you know, I've, I've had like friends that have gone like really deep into gambling and they just, yeah. it, it not only does it become a problem, but, but it becomes like a problem that they hide and yeah. then they'll just become a shitty person. Like I've seen it where people will just steal and lie and just to get you know, a little bit of money or just to get like that yeah. next fix. And it's, you burn like relationships, uh, like with family and friends just over that shit. And yeah. it's, I've got control of it. Like, I'm, like I don't have a problem, but I know sometimes people don't have a problem until they have a problem. And I know there is a slippery slope that people can go down. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I just think you've, you've got to be careful with it and you've got to just, I guess, be smart about it as well, which includes not listening to my chat on the NFL, but um <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's, that's well. I'm yeah. glad to hear that you're like a, at least aware. Um, this yeah. is not meant to be this like anti gambling thing, but I guess no. just I've personally seen it like actually like really negatively affect people, and you know it's all anecdotal yeah. at the end of the day. But still, I just that's probably the, like in in a weird way probably a positive thing for you because that make that gives you a clearer perspective of gambling, like your your own experience of gambling. You probably don't want to gamble much or at all. Because yeah, of what I you stand to do to other people, you know. I completely avoid it. Um, and yep. what really scares me is like, so for example, I have um, I have a younger brother that's twenty two, yep. and like when he graduated, like he came out and lived with my brother and I when I was living in Alabama, and like, you know, he just got an advertisement for like sports betting or you know DraftKings or whatever it was. And yeah. he, he like he had never gambled before, and then you know he gets this thing, he wins, and he's just on this cloud nine. He's like, oh, like this is fucking awesome, and he's trying to get like his work friends to get involved. And I'm like, when yeah. he told me that, I'm like, dude, like this is you know this is just straight up gambling, right? Like this isn't like <laughs> it's just your anyway. So the my fear is that first of all, gambling is everywhere. I mean, it's just like you go on Twitter. Yeah. Now, I will go on Twitter and like half of the ads are some sort of sports betting app. And it's yep. just like, if, if I didn't know better, it's one of those things like, oh, I can just win a hundred bucks right here. Like the cool, like let's get it. And you just get, you just slide in just very sneakily into this new like arena of just gambling. And so I guess my fear is like people are uneducated on the matter of gambling and how negatively it can affect your life. So yep. I guess it's mainly for like the people that haven't gotten into it that, that just see everywhere online about, you know, people winning a lot of money. It's like this. Uh... Well, it's 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 in the game too, right? In RuneScape, like death matching is to some people literally the, their livelihood, the only content they do. And, and mm -hmm. let's be honest, some people do it to make ends meet sometimes. So, well, it, it, it's all in order it's all, to... in all shapes and sizes, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is like, if you have odds, you know, if, if you literally have a system where you are winning more than 50% of the time, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't want to go down like this rabbit hole like too far, yeah, but, yeah, just, yeah, but right. it's just like, I know Bikers, uh, he's yep. obviously won like a trillion yep. uh, OSR as GP, but and I don't know the full thing. I don't even care really because it's just not my scene. It's just more just mental. I, I don't I don't want to spend my time thinking about like that stuff. It's just not in my you yeah, know, fair scene. Enough. But what I at least I saw, and who knows what the truth is or anything, but I saw like a Kemp Q video and it's just like, okay, clearly it looks like bikers and some other guys knew a way to, you know, kind of glitch and get one hit like or get the first hit get pinned they'll get the every first time. hit yeah and there was a kind of yeah. like a way and yes it's not it's not exactly bug abusing but it's a hidden mechanic where you know people don't know about it and so you're 
basically being really shady and kind of scamming in a sense where you you are very aware that this guy doesn't know how to get first hit. And yeah, so, you're, you're having a, a significant advantage for sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just drastic. I mean, if you get first hit every time and you can guarantee it, basically, if you're playing somebody stupid, like, yeah, you're, you're, you're scamming people. Um, that's how yeah. I see it. And so the thing that's really shady about it is like, okay, that's cool. You're flexing all your money and stuff, but like you literally scammed your audience doing that shit, like clearly. And one of the worst parts about gambling is like, you kind of have to do that. Like you have to be a piece of shit in order to actually like make a bunch of money. Like, yeah, you, 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 you gotta play the system within like, like there's so many gray areas that it's like, you could argue it's bug abuse or you could argue that it's just like it's the spaghetti code because of the way that they've um, made the safe zone mm -hmm. interact with you when you enter and re-enter, right? And then mm -hmm. it's like, then is that the game's fault or the player's fault? If everyone starts doing it, then does it become the new norm? Like uh, there's like the people felt the same really early on about like DDing in PvP and now everyone does it because like you're at such a disadvantage if you don't DD yep. your opponent, right? And then, I mean, some people still look at it as in like, that's too sweaty for me. It's it's ready to do. I try not to do it in LMS unless they do it to me first. But like when I did the the Odeblock tournament, the PvP tournament, I knew that I, if I'm not DDing, I'm fucked. I've yeah, got a, yeah, you have to. And then like, I couldn't land a fucking freeze anyway because this game hates me. But like, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a gray area. And I'm, I'm all for the whole, you know, take what you can, give nothing back. If you If you're in that gambling scene, you're dealing with people that are going to fuck you over anyway, so they're going to take advantage of each other. Yeah, that's why I just try to avoid yeah. the whole thing because I'm like, this absolutely just yeah. is like, ugh, like this. I was is very cautious so when I covered that too, because um, I, I I didn't want to just like jump on board with one like with Camp Q or BTCs without mm -hmm. knowing the full story. So I tried to understand it best I could because it's also a very delicate situation and there's a lot of mixed opinions. So. It's just, yeah, I yeah. I still don't fully uh, understand or, or still don't fully, like, have a preference. I just, I stay away from it, but, like, if it comes up again, I'll cover it. Yeah. Um, I, again, uh, like, I, I'm, yeah. I am ill-informed on most of it. I just, yeah. I'm, I'm grasping at the things I did see. And yeah, it just is a fair. friendly reminder to me to just stay away from gambling because it just leads yeah. to just hatred. <laughs> I mean, you just start... Yeah just hating people and you mm -hmm. do things out of bad faith and it's just yeah i had shit. a mate who was a big staker when the dollar arena was around and he like would be in a discord call and then you just hear like smashing and then just fuck's sake mm -hmm. and then logs off and he lost like you know 600 mil and it's like why <laughs> and then but like it it's that crowd of people where they would go out and have massive clan wars but they had a play mod on their clan so they're like muting the whole enemy team <laughs> the play mods muting everyone on the other team while they're in the clan war so they can't give comms in game and then you've got there, there were people who will like i think someone got away from him in the wilderness uh when he was meant to get like a 300 mil pk so he felt that he owed him that 300k so there now he's in the world of people who he got a hold of his account and mm. they logged into it reset the bank pin but he couldn't he had to wait like uh, I don't know how long it's like three days or seven days or something. Yeah, like so a week. He had his, he had another mate, and they were taking six hour shifts to keep the account consistently logged in, so the guy couldn't get into his account oh until the bank thing was disabled. And it's just like, like I mean, he made some money. I'm not gonna lie, but I I I can't enter that world one because even as a creator, you just can't be doing that shit. But also, like, it's just another level of like. It, it's a it's a rabbit hole once you go down it's hard to come back from because I'm, I'm sure there's a thrill to it for those people it's just like and, yeah when I you're mean, making money from it too yeah i mean it's, it's just like, like the question is like how do you want to spend your life i mean you have yeah. one life do you want to just scam people like you know you'll you'll <laughs> see people that like you know run you know just um scam on like twitch like they'll just like pull up a you know create a fake osrs stream and just be like oh like you know type in your information here it's like oh he's quitting yeah like th those things like there's clearly people behind it yep. and yep. that's how they're spending their time like they're they are literally preying on people just they're just scamming Innocent. people like just how you're spending like yeah. do you 
you know, it happens clearly. I mean, there's just way beyond right, RuneScape. Yeah. I mean, just in the real world, like people are scamming and that's how they make their money. And it's like, is really like that's that's what you want to do with your life? Like just scam? Like you couldn't have found any like positive thing? I don't know. Yeah, I no, just... That's, just the, that's the corner of the world that they, they come from. Eventually they probably do move on, but like... When you see easy money, people will just, you know, they'll burn bridges. It's, it, it, I mean, even, it goes as far as just doing a raid with someone who you've been friends with, but then they pull a shadow and they dip instead of oh splitting when they God. said they'll split. It's like they're, you're burning bridges over fucking peanuts, but <laughs> that people will do that, man. Like, it's just I that's know. the fucking internet, dude. So. It's fucked up. It's weird how, yeah. like, the internet has kind of painted a negative view of like humanity for a lot of people and myself included. Like mm -hmm. you go on Twitter and you know, you just start like shitting on people, but you would never do it to their face in person. Like you no, would, no, you would be, <laughs> you would be such a kind person and have a good laugh, but online it's like, nah, you have a fucking enemy. Like there's no consequences yeah. here. And I'll just, tear you apart and make you feel like shit like that's the thing that really is destructive about especially social media and i have mm -hmm. i have no idea how they could revert how social media has like it's basically just become interaction like just how can i get the most interactions from this let's just shit on yeah. somebody yeah that's the trend right like uh, especially like if you want to make it big on youtube or tiktok you it, you know it's you fucking running up to porta potties at construction sites and tipping them over while cunts are in there and shit just like <laughs> just just, shit. Yeah, just doing, just doing is... horrible shit to horrible people dude it's fucking hilarious but like that's how people are getting the getting their first x amount of followers <sighs> into social media and i don't know if it lasts but it's like i guess it's just disingenuous as opposed to making your own content but again like dude it's that easy sometimes <laughs> do you see that video like it was like a few days ago. Like a guy got shot in the mall be uh, over a prank. Uh, no. <laughs> this guy was like, uh, apparently, I didn't yeah. really look into it that much. But there was this guy that was like holding up a phone, like, and the phone was saying something like accusing him of being a pedophile or something. It was just like some random like oh, delivery no. driver. And then like he was like genuinely harassing him. But you know, then the guy that was getting harassed just pulled out a gun and just shot him. He didn't die, but. And the guy that shot him is going to prison for like a, a, yeah, a few course. years. Yeah, of course. His his last fucked now. Yeah. Like, but like, then you come out, you got yeah. the charge, and it's, yeah. Well, uh, apparently he didn't actually get arrested for shooting the guy. He got arrested for shooting a gun in a mall. So like, oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, it was yeah, actually no. like like I apparently like the the judge was like, nah, like you're. You were actually in your right to, uh, you know, yeah, shoot that right. guy for harassing you. <laughs> but like, yeah, but you should have done it outside. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I'm like, bro, and then and then the guy that was running the prank, like he he got it out of the hospital. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna keep doing pranks. I'm like, oh my god, dude, like you're you're literally just harassing people. This, these aren't yeah. even pranks. You're just being an asshole. Yeah, some ice Poseidon shit. <laughs> I know. I don't even get me started oh, on his latest thing and that. Oh my god, I've yeah. I've seen some shit. And I'm like. This is, uh, dude, <laughs> and a lot of it is done on kick. Um, yeah. And I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, but like, kick is just. Yeah, the kick trend is interesting because well, Alfie and Odoblock moved over. Everyone else that was raving about it and moving over has dipped. They're they're all back gone, on Twitch. Gone back or, to Twitch. Yeah, yeah it's a, yeah that ninety five five split was really working. I mean, let's be honest, what it was was just. Whether it was intentional or not, you were just double dipping on your viewers. Like they're already subbed to you on Twitch. Do it on Kick as well. Now you've got them twice for a couple of months. That's, you know that's the. I mean, if it, if it worked out and Kick tech, uh, took off, then sweet. But take advantage of that situation. Otherwise, like right now, Odoblock's live. He's got two thousand and seventy-seven viewers, and there's two thousand two hundred nineteen viewers in the old school RuneScape category on Kick. Like. <sighs> And then one of them's watching him. So like, <laughs> <laughs> so like, what like, it, it's it, it didn't work. Um, obviously they got paid to move over, so that's a different story. But that also then devalues the argument of whether it worked or not. But no, I I wonder how I wonder Oda Block's true feelings on the matter. Like clearly he probably got a huge bag. I I don't know if you yeah. know how much he got paid. Do you? I don't. I, I do not know. But I. I 
I don't want to misquote, but I feel like someone told me six figures, and that would probably make sense. Because oh, Gary, it's got to have like, been somewhere in six figures. I, yeah. I can't imagine doing it for less than that at his level. That, that like the fact that they paid XQC a hundred million, like uh, go to block, yeah. has got to have made. Uh, I would even yeah, say he, half a million so. or more. Yeah, absolutely, and I like I would have done the same. Like. It's, I would have done the same for something in the five figure realm, to be honest, because I could multi stream anyway. Like YouTube yeah, doesn't yeah. have that restriction, Twitch has, so I could have done both the whole time. Um, I just don't want to, personally. But yeah, there, there's something to be said, and, and of course he joined when it was more hype, and there was clearly yeah. some hype, especially in the old school scene. So yeah. it seemed like a better move. And I mean, I just remember when Shroud and Ninja moved over to Mixer, and <laughs> like it's like, oh, that's great yeah. and all, but. And it all it obviously did work out like hella good for both of them because yep. the contract ended up getting scratched anyway. And like, oh, fuck it. We're just going bankrupt on this. Or I guess yep. not bankrupt, but they're just canceling Mixer. But um, yeah, I just wonder now if Oda Block and Alfie especially like are happy with their decision. I know it's not permanent. I mean, I, I'm assuming it's just yeah, a Yeah, well, I guess we got to find out. when. I would imagine it's, it's a year long. It might be multi-year long contract when that's up. If it's renewed for less than what they got offered originally, I can't imagine they'd stay. Yeah, no way. Like, what, why, why would you stay if they offered you less than the next time around? But, yeah, it, it, we probably wouldn't know anything until after the contract's ended at least because you don't want to start shitting on the platform that's, you know, providing yeah, you yeah, no, the, it's, the platform. So. Yeah, no, for sure. And like, I don't blame anybody for taking the bag. It, I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's like you're not. just streaming RuneScape. I mean... So that's the uh, example I always use is I'd, I'd rather like I I, I don't I, I turn down a lot of like sponsors myself in, on my videos because I can't be fucked jumping through hoops for a thousand bucks. I, I, I cannot be fucked. <laughs> I, but dude, if it's a stream, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the worst thing is, is the sponsorships that like, are, like they're they're low balling you to yeah. hell because they just yeah. think you're, you know, you're just like, it will do anything for a few dimes. Yeah. Like, and I'm not with an agency, so they like assume that you don't know what you're doing either. It's like to be honest, like if I can't do a sponsorship on stream, I I'm not interested. Like I don't run ads on my streams intentionally, and I'll just do a sponsor or I'll do like promotions on streams, which I've done in in the past, and they've been pretty fun. Mm -hmm. But like otherwise, I, I would just rather as long as I can keep streaming and I don't have to get a job, like that's enough for me. If obviously if the money was big enough, I'll be like, yeah, okay, I'll do that sponsor in a video. But otherwise, I just like, I fucking cannot be bothered. I tried doing one recently, and I was like, nah, fuck this. I just gave it back. I was like, nah, <laughs> <I know. laughs> I'm alright, dude. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I don't know how many times I've been reached out for Factor or HelloFresh. Yeah. First of all, and and these are all for like my Twitch, and I haven't streamed consistently in months yeah. at this point. But like, I mean, Raid Shadow Legends, at least when I'd get a sponsorship from them. They'd pay me like a grand plus whatever else I got. Like just the fact that I don't even need to get downloads and they'll still pay me almost a grand. Yeah. Like yeah. this is back when that I was, was kind of a, yeah, like yeah. like thank you. Like that actually feels appropriate. And mm -hmm. but then when you get a HelloFresh thing, it's like, hey, we'll pay you fifty bucks. And then you yeah. know if you if you get any sale, if you act like our bitch little salesman, we'll we'll give you a little bit more money. I'm like, dude, I'm yeah. not your salesman. It's like Manscaped. I was like, like Manscaped reach out, and I'm like. I like in the RuneScape community because like everyone with like Crusader talent, they're all doing. They do like the same sponsors at the same time, nearly, right? So they yeah. Doing, you, you watch Solar Mission and Rendy and then Jimmy and then fucking like EVScape, and they're all doing um, Manscaped. And it's like, then why would I do Manscaped? Like you've already bought fucking Jimmy's. Why mm -hmm. you're not gonna buy mine as well, are you? So no, fuck that. So I just, I just don't think it's worth it. Yeah. But again, that's me. That's me being a low effort. Yeah, like, that's saying you know. we're both we're both coping at the end of the day. Yeah. But like it, the the thing is is like there's room to grow and yep. at that like you don't want to have just taken all these like penny sponsorships and mm. like just kind of sold yourself out a little bit low. Like yeah, I don't know. The, just... other, the thing is is there's a habit that I've seen people get into and you mentioned it was Solar Mission, um, which I, I don't know if it's a habit for him, but it sounds like it the way the way that he um, you said that he's explained it was that like he he won't upload a video unless there's a sponsor tied yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which like I, I get that, and a lot of people do that because I've heard other content creators in RuneScape say that too. And then that to me just sounds like that they either have 
not necessarily given up on content creation, but it's just like they they're not interested in just putting content out for the sake of putting content out, which is what I like to do. Yeah. So um, I don't want to fall into that habit. It, I, I'm I love having like three four videos going on the channel each week, and just getting as many views as I can uh, over the month and then just seeing it grow because I, I mean to me that's that's enjoyable um I, I wouldn't want to get to the point where I'm not uploading unless I get a, a sponsor because that's just that shouldn't be the reason I'm uploading totally to me but that that's when I, I lose interest as a content creator so I, yeah. yeah but that it's obviously that people are in different situations but that that's just me personally I wouldn't want to get to that point yeah i think the most like optimal of course this is you know not everyone can have this but like an optimal position to be in would be like your community supports you entirely like you don't need to take sponsorships you don't need ads you just maybe have a patreon maybe you have just your subscriber base and like that is enough like that would be so cool because then it's just you don't need to be annoying you don't need to spew out ads don't need to spew out sponsorships and you're making a a decent living like that would be yeah that's, that's sponsors the make up a lot of the money that people pull in as content creators but the the best like stable income you can make is through subscription-based services like the channel memberships on youtube the twitch subs mm-hmm. the patreons because like as humans we're we're fucking idiots like how many people do you reckon are paying for netflix and probably don't even watch it more than twice a month yep right so i was like, yeah guilty of that and we'll just keep paying for it how many people pay for spotify and then probably go weeks without listening to music it's just it's consistent and getting people to jump on your subscription plans especially like a, like a, this is a selfish plug but i make mine a dollar a month mm-hmm. so that's that's appealing to people because a dollar you're not going to miss a dollar a month as opposed to 15 dollars a month if you watch me enough people feel like yeah it's only a buck but then when you have thousands of people doing it you you got a little pool of people that are, are in that comfortable spot where they barely see the money going uh, away and then it, it just works as a creator I, I feel yep um you just have to find the right balance between value and then the value for you and value for the for the viewers at the same time so totally i, I think yeah that that's that's not a bad way to kind of start start your like your revenue especially early on as a creator um it's just it's a shame that twitch does 50 50 because i i i I think that's fucking ridiculous it is and you know what's i gotta say like i gotta hand it to youtube like it's cool that you get to choose how much it costs yeah that's really uh, really cool too that's amazing because like i've i've set my membership as like as like um i think it's a dollar 99 on youtube for uh the lowest And then upward, and then there's like a five, and then there's a ten. But yeah, um, yeah I think just having like that <laughs> smaller thing, it just because I would like to support creators, but having to spend five bucks on a bunch of creators. But if it was like a dollar per creator, like dude, I could support five creators now, and it feels like just yeah, once, like that'd I be amazing. I recently heard from my Twitch because I w- I was like sub to just insert RuneScape streamer here, and. When I've got like eight eight streamers, nine streamers on Twitch, I'm sub to, and it's it's I think it's like eight Australian dollars a month, and I'm looking at I'm I'm not even watching Twitch, man, and I'm just I'm just there's forty bucks coming out of my account. I was like I got to cancel this shit, so I've got to go to their stream and be like oh I don't have a I don't have a, a sub anymore. My bad, guys. But it's just like, if it was cheaper, I'd probably hold on a bit longer at least. But it, I just found that I was fucking subbing to people and then never watching them, and then I want to support them, but also the money it's just like I, I know they're not even getting that full amount exactly. as well which i i don't think that's really yeah I, I don't like that so like but it's hard to outsource it like it's more convenient to just sub on twitch while I they're know. on twitch it's, it's there it's in your face it's so easy to just gift i just yeah i just that's another thing i love about youtube in comparison um especially since they bought gifting memberships to youtube as well like that's helped creators on here heaps it's just you you get you you get seventy thirty split out the gate, no questions asked. Like that's the standard, and you don't need to like do anything special for it. And I just think that's while that might even be considered too high. That's also like for for what the service offers, because you can also then add like special videos that only you can see if you're 
a member on YouTube and you, you know what they, they can offer. Like I think uh, I've got a, a meme tier, which I never thought anyone would buy, but it was a hundred dollars a month, a hundred American dollars a month. And a couple of people have bought it. So I upload feet pics, which I need to do actually this month. I upload feet pics <laughs> to just for them to see. And they like, you know, they come to the stream, like where's the fucking feet pics at? Like they're demanding it. So I've got to keep on top of it. Just for like purely a joke, never thought it would happen. And when one day it happened, it spun me out. I was like, what the fuck? Did like, are you okay? Look, you realize how much money you're sending to someone like a month? That's fucking insane. But <laughs> there's I mean, some, if it's not a fake fix, <laughs> dude, it's crazy when you see like huge gifters on Twitch yeah. or just people that donate metric fuck tons to multiple creators. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, are like, you just a millionaire? Like, are you just yeah. like, uh, yeah, guys bought it on the fucking GameStop <laughs> hype for sure. Like, <laughs> yeah, they must the have. Money. I don't know. It's always it's always fascinating to see people like actually give like multiple grands away like a yep. month to people. I'm just like, it's it is Jesus. insane, and it's also a bit like being on the receiving end of just like uh, like to me, I, I I think like any more than like, I mean any more than the dollar really. But like when people start sending ten bucks onwards, I'm like that's a lot of money, man, to just give to someone like. And people do it consistently. I don't know, like, how to feel about it half the time. Because obviously mm -hmm. I'm thankful. But I'm also, like, like, are you looking after yourself, too? Like, you're, like I can't throw that sort of money away. What do you, what, like... Yeah, that's, you're like, the... better than me, then, I guess. But, the, that's, yeah. that's definitely, like, the reminder I have to give myself. It's, like, not everyone's in the same position. I mean, some people make great money. And they yeah. want to show the love. Like, I've, I've had a few, you know, occasions where, like, I'll chuck a hundred bucks at somebody. Because, you know, I just got paid. And I'm, like... I've been watching your content for a year. Like yeah. this would, I know for a fact because I'm a creator and when people have shown me a ton of love, like it feels great. And it's just like, yeah. it's a friendly reminder that like you're desired, like your, your content is like, you know, yeah. something that it's, people it's, watch. It's great. And it just like, especially like when it happens to me, I, 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 I I don't do it as much anymore, but I used to always look at my analytics on YouTube and be like, how am I trending? How did I do today? How did I mm -hmm. do yesterday? How did I do 10 minutes ago? So it's it's like when things like that happen, when people go whale mode, it's like, it feels good knowing that I can do this again next month. So, it, and it, it is just like, I always, I, I don't, I never know how to just be thankful for it. I do, I, I will just like do shoeys on stream when big <laughs> donations come in. And I just feel like. All I they mean, expect is a thank you. They don't even expect anything, right? I'll do a shoey. Oh, no, they, 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 they expect a shoey. Now there's a riot if there's no shoey. <laughs> and like, it's just, it's, it's just become a running meme. But sometimes I feel like that's not even enough when people go nuts. Like I, I've got, yeah. I know. It's, it's, it's always, it's because. It's so much projection on our part. It's like this feeling that if we don't absolutely thank them from the bottom of our hearts for the next 10 minutes, then they're going to get buyer's remorse. They're going to be like, oh, well, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you, you got to be, you got to, you got to watch out for those, uh, parasocial relationships that viewers have with you. You, that you do. You don't even know that they have. Those they get, have happened. They get out of fucking hand. Dude, have you had those happen to you? Like, uh way too many times dude it's insane in all sa shapes and sizes it's yeah it's so it's, uncomfortable it's rough. yeah it's also just like i mean i don't take shit from a lot of people but sometimes people just get involved or, or people just try to the, the the worst ones are the people that just assume that because they've like paid a lot of money or they've even just signed up for the subscription service that gives them the right now to just be a fucking like sex pest and i'm like yep. no no and there's no refunds either like shut the fuck up and then they get mad when they get timed out and they're like how could you do this to me I'm like look you just like be a normal person if you're not a weird weird cunt like it's then you're good yeah you don't don't have yeah. to drag it out sometimes i've had a few people that have yeah i, I feel like I, I think they're always drunk when it happens or there's some something going on, so it's a bit like yeah. now I feel like I'm 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 I, I don't want I, half the time I tell I'm, I don't feel bad at the same time you know I kind of tell them yeah well you know if if you're gonna come here and and make people feel uncomfortable like this isn't a therapy session but also I hope you're not 
you know, I don't want to see you off yourself at the same time. Or I don't want to see you go and hurt people. So yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. For sure it's tough. I, and I can't even imagine what it's like for a girl streamer to I feel so bad for them, man. What's like, even worse is like a new girl streamer that yep. has a small audience and then you got like a couple oil princes in there that take control of the stream. <laughs> yep. You got the Saudi and, daddies in there. That's and then it. you're like, what what do I do because like, you know, they're now paying my rent <laughs> and Yeah. It's just like, fuck, like I can't just tell them to go fuck themselves because I actually low key want this money. Yeah. So you got to find the fine line between, I guess, unfortunately, what level of harassment you're willing to accept for them to pay your rent, right? Because oh my then God. They, they, they cross that line instantly. And I think the problem is it always seems to be right at the start of like a streaming career. Mm -hmm. And then you have to also just be mindful that there's always a high and then there's lows. But it's just like, yeah, I, I feel really bad. Like a, a lot of um, like a lot of women, especially in the RuneScape community that I've, I've seen or interacted with that um, get into streaming or that are even just like on Twitter. I, I, I don't like the Twitter RuneScape space. I don't like the Twitch uh, RuneScape space. I've, I feel like there's a lot of just, there's a lot of sex pest energy that I just, uh, I, I just stay away from it. That's why I also like being on YouTube because it's a completely different environment. And I'm not saying everyone is like that and every stream's like that, but you see the same people doing the same shit and it's just like, yep. I'm not going to be that guy that, that, you know, calls you out in someone's chat. So I'm just going to avoid it. It's just, yeah. yeah it's unfortunate because for... that's the internet at the same time, right? So I've been, it's not um, just RuneScape. I have been considering potentially trying out YouTube streaming and mm. I've, I've pulled on or I've, I've done one YouTube stream and it it went surprisingly well. Yep. Like obviously it was my first, so I don't know if it was just kind of like a more hype moment, but like, you know, I got up to 150 viewers uh, and that's, that's fucking awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just like, I was just having a discussion and it felt like a completely different audience. I was talking to like, it didn't, maybe it's just like the names are all unfamiliar. So it just seems different. But when you go live on Twitch, I mean, you, you have this, group that kind of just kind of goes around twitch 24 7 like same this. people in the same chats they just yeah recycle yeah which isn't like a bad Twitch thing at all but like you do kind of start getting that kind of clickiness where there is yep. a very strict culture to twitch and it seems to just circle around every stream and uh it's interesting so i think it would be almost refreshing to just try out youtube but the problem is is like i you know i don't it's like one of those things where it's like, do I stream on both? I mean, it would just be like a test drive basically to see what I like more, but um, it would be cool to just, yeah. I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, no one's ever been banned for stream for multi-streaming Twitch and YouTube. Yeah, you can't I know now it's either. They've, TOS. They've, they've changed the TOS, so now you can openly stream on different things with at Twitch. At the same time? Yeah, a, as a Twitch partner, you can stream on YouTube now. You oh, just Oh, oh sorry, awesome. you just can't do it at the very same time. Oh no! Yeah, see, I, I, I've done it at the very same time. I know people like Nine Rain do it as well. He'll do both mm. at the same time and just send it. Um, I, I don't think anyone's ever been banned for actually doing that though. I'm not going to tell you to go ahead and do it, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm always curious because I tried doing it again earlier this year, just doing both and seeing what happens. But, um, and I didn't have any backlash from. It. I'm only an affiliate on Twitch though, but I don't. Um, I, I try. I endorse the youtube with streaming i i think that I, I would encourage people to try it well kind of do i do and i don't i don't want people to try it because i like having the monopoly but <laughs> i think as a like a creator yeah i do i do think that it provides especially if you already have a youtube channel i think it provides a good um avenue to grow your youtube channel further like because the views and the watch time all count towards your channel which if you don't have a, a, if you're not a partner on YouTube yet is massive because watch time on streams is like ridiculously busted because if it's 10 people watching for half an hour, that's 10 half an hours only like within 30 minutes rather than it being like three hours or whatever it is, but like five hours. So, um, but uh, it, it's just like, it depends what you want from your stream service at the end of the day. Like you have a lot more creative freedom on YouTube. You don't really have to look over your shoulder when you look at or say certain things 
you the the video player is arguably better, but the chat is less. Um, it's it's less. Um, the mod the mod system on YouTube is fucking terrible compared to Twitch's. Um, and yeah. I, I do I do think Twitch has a better. I like that with Twitch you can split your audio, and that saves the vod from being deleted. Oh, but, true. Um, you can't do that on YouTube. I've kind of come up with a uh, over the past few years i've been trying to play the system so i can play what kind of whatever almost whatever music i like without having copyright issues youtube won't ban you you won't get a strike you'll get a copyright claim or whatever which i don't care about um it doesn't affect your channel in in any way negatively you just don't get ad revenue for that stream but i just turn it off so there's no harm to the viewer Mm. um but if you play it too much on stream, it'll like suspend it temporarily until you stop. Then it will just resume it. So it doesn't like end the stream. It just puts up a warning, um, which is annoying. So you just kind of have to try to play that system. There's a lot of copyright free music and a lot of remixes that are like really safe. So I've just kind of been trying to craft a playlist together that works really well with the system that is still enjoyable to listen to. But yeah, that is I, a little I, bit I, annoying. I, I feel like yeah, if I were is. to ever stream on YouTube, it, it would literally have to be just... Like stream beats, like Harris Heller, that shit. It's no, I, I don't even. I don't even think I'd but... play music. I would just try to yeah. go like the silent route, where it's just conversation. Just based. Turn on the RuneScape music, to be honest. Yeah. As well, if you were playing a game, at least. <laughs> but if you're doing conversation based, yeah, you don't really need to have music, which is a, a bonus for that. But I, I think they they just provide discoverability is questionable because I don't think discoverability is really good on Twitch either because it's kind of like whoever's the most viewers is up the top, and then like whoever you raid or whoever you've scene gets promoted Mm -hmm. but i don't have to try to drag people to twitch from youtube they just subscribe to my videos which is how it started out anyway and then i go live and they get told i'm live so i feel like the alert's already there for most people yeah it works out yeah there's there's things i wish they did better at the same time but um i definitely am, am biased of course and another topic bit of a controversial yep. one who are mm-hmm. your three favorite and least favorite osrs streamers slash content creators and why yeah um <laughs> favorite i i love t papa slice he's the man it, it just yeah he's good love t papa um I'm a big fan of Jono too, um, Tao Aris, who's on the GIM team. He's always just been a really stand-up guy, just in general, as a creator and just as, like, a mate. Um, especially because a lot of, um, especially, like, the Australian RuneScape community, um, uh, they're not a big fan of me in the way that I've presented myself towards the higher end of the gaming community uh, for RuneScape over the past few years. But he's always just been, like, he's been indifferent about it and always been a, a good guy. And he just like I love watching him get smashed on stream. Like his his chat abuses the fuck out of him with uh, getting him shit faced, which is always good content. Um, and then it probably the thing is I don't really watch too many content creators on RuneScape unless I'm like reacting. I would probably say Prison Joe as well. I know they're they're all streamers, but I think Prison Joe is just a really good hype man. Like if he was, if if like if there was any sort of commentating that needed to be done in old school runescape or in general like he's the guy to go to he's just fucking he knows how to bring the party so i think he does a good job that would actually be crazy i'm just thinking right now like imagine prison joe and eevee scape on a i feel like he he could just really he brings a level of energy to any content no matter what like it's just yeah it's just like he he could like he could like sell fucking ice to an eskimo and everyone would just love watching that shit happen like it wouldn't matter yeah, he have a black no, he's, up the whole he's, time he's got unlimited energy. energy. He used to do like mm. 24 hour streams like every two weeks. Like he was just yeah. nuts. Yeah, he, he's, he's built this uh, different for sure. Yeah. He, he's he's good too. I enjoy watching him. As for Lee's favorite, I like, I don't really, I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there's no one I really hate. I will be honest. Like people are expecting me to say did a bitter. <laughs> and probably EV Escape, but I, I don't hate them as creators. Like, so tell me, okay, this is this is um, yeah. Why do they hate you? <laughs> so I need to. Um, this is I'm I, I am you don't know out of. I, I don't know. I don't know all the oh. the controversy. I really don't. I'm never oh, like searching no. for it. 
Oh shit! Okay. So let's That's, hear it if you don't well, mind. Well, welcome if, to the rabbit hole. No, I I don't mind. Okay. Just, um, yeah. So because I like was, both of them, I like both. I like yeah. Bitter Bitter and I like Eve Escape. So I I want to know and this you know. Well, I just I just want to hear. Yeah, there, there was uh there was some head clashing um at some point. So what happened was it was before. It was before the like the Rev boss, the Rev K's boss came out. Um, so it was also before League Three, I believe. Do you know the the um, the world boss in the in the Revs case? Before that came out, there was a period where like Ditter Bitter was pretty much he was just uploading videos and it was peaking, but also complaining, "Oh, Jax isn't fixing the wilderness. They're not doing anything about PVP. They don't care about the wilderness. I'm not making any more PVP content. I don't like this." But then proceeded to just keep doing it and making and uploading the videos. So when that Rev Boss came out, I thought that was great for the wilderness. And I said, I do like these weekly news videos. And when it came out, I was like, oh, this is good. Maybe did a bit of will finally shut the fuck up for a week. And I didn't think it was that big of a deal to say, but he took that quite personally. Um, and like him and Neve said, commented like, like this is this Eminem looking ass motherfucker, like talking shit. And he's like, it's the last time I use your nightmare guide. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and then I saw Skiddler was live. And Eviescape was on camera as well, so they were like both live on his stream. I was like, oh, I'll go by and say hi and just see if anything happens, just to stir some shit. And then Eviescape saw me, recognized my name. He like he texted Ditter, so then he came to the chat. And they were just like wondering what the hell was like, why I said that, who do I think I am? And I was like, I'm just like vibing, man. I'm just making content and I thought it was funny to say. And then Ditter was like, oh, I'll fucking submit you in the octagon, fuck you. You know, he was like, you know, he was mad at me for it, spam yeah. typing. And I was like, all right, dude. But then I was like, like, all jokes aside, I don't know how to PK. I'd like, I'd lo like, would you mind teaching me? Do you mind, do you mind showing me how to PK? I'd love to, I'd love to try it. Not trying to be, be an asshole or anything, but he was like, yeah, jump on TeamSpeak. So I was like, okay, it's just, yeah, okay. You, I go on there, you, you're getting into my computer, fuck that. Uh, but I did, then I DM'd him on Twitter. And I was like, yeah, look, I was only, like, I didn't want to blow up in like Skidless stream chat because that's not fair on him. Like, even if he was like enjoying it or whatever, but legit, I'd love to learn to PK if you ever want to like, you know, talk about it. I didn't mean to upset you guys. I, I, I've got it here like word for word somewhere. Um, yeah, I was like, unironically, I, I, I couldn't understand half the shit being said in the stream, but um, if you're confused or bothered or upset by what I said in the video, I'm happy to provide context and like, you know, make sense of it. There's no hate towards you. I just, you know, had a differing opinion on some stuff that you were saying, and I thought it was funny to put in the video. Um, and yeah, I was like, yeah, no hard content. No, so no hard feelings. Um, happy to provide context and talk about it, but I didn't want to do that to Skidler's stream. Um, yeah, that's when I realized that they actually didn't like it, and like because of the way that Evie Skate reacted. So, but I didn't get a response from that. Um, and I was like, I mean, he said he'd submit to me in the octagon, so I was like, you know, it'd be funny and good content. If there was a boxing match, not because I want to box him, not because I want to fight him, but I just think that was like the trend at the time with all the YouTube boxing. And I was like, if there was like a big boxing event within RuneScape, the RuneScape creators, like who the fuck wouldn't want to watch that? That that sounds like, <laughs> like, like you, you, everyone would want to watch it. You want to see RuneScape creators beat the fuck out of each other? Yeah. Like, so I was like, why don't we do this? Set up a boxing match, had no response, had nothing for ages. Um... There was like subtle, like, like, I would say something on Twitter and then like Ditter would like quote tweet it, like trying to mock me on other people's streams, uh, on other people's uh, tweets and everything. And then it just kind of went silent um, for a while. And then there was the Golden Gnomes last year. No, early this year, I, I looked at the nominees and there was one specific person on there that I wasn't the nicest about um, for about a. I know, it was like a 30 minute video. I'd say like maybe five minutes of that video was me like covering so someone I don't like. There's someone I genuinely don't like. I wouldn't put them on this list though for the tweet because I don't class them as a content creator. But um, then he, I, I think what happened was, this is my, my take on the situation. I think Ditter Bitter took that and saw that opportunity because it looked like everyone was against me for my opinion on that because she happened to be a woman. So people were just like saying I'm sexist and everything, which is completely out of context. But then... Yeah, Ditter was like, oh, this is a good opportunity to make a drama video. So he put out a video, but the problem with that video was, and like, oh, it was, the first 15 seconds of that video was him, he, he word for word stole a Moist Critical intro, and I've got the video that I uploaded to my channel. 
like he he most critical put a video out ten days before that, and then he just yeah word for word took the intro. It couldn't even one take it, and then tried to like I guess burn me for the next twenty minutes in the video. It was really poorly done. Um, I don't really class it as drama because it was kind of just like a, a nothing burger at the end of the day, but it just like kind of spiraled out of control within like the PvP community as well. Mm. Um, they were all really, yeah. Some people were really hype about it. Most people that didn't support me on my end of it either already didn't like me or never watched my response I found. So I just dis disregarded their takes and I, I, I write them off immediately because, I mean... You, I feel like if you're in that situation, especially as a creator, you deserve to have your side heard before people start ragging on other people. Like you should be able to hear both sides of the story and seeing what's happening. But yeah, it kind of just like spun out of control, and I was just trying to have a have a have a laugh the whole time. But since then, I, I know that it's been like it's it's evident Ditter doesn't like me. He avoids me. I'm I'm confident to say that. No, I don't. I don't want to rag too much on on your platform, of course. But I, I think it's no, no, I don't. I don't. I don't mind so, uh, this. Th yeah, this is all my my opinion and what I see. But I I, I think he's he's scared of interacting with me. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think Eviscape necessarily dislikes me. He probably dislikes me more than hates me. But I, I just think um, people always like try to come to me with, oh, did you see did did this? Did you see Evie did this? I don't really care. Like I don't dislike them as creators or anything I, I i wouldn't go out of my way to watch them but it's not like it's not like i have any hate towards them i, I love winding people up so if i see the opportunity to wind up did a bit i'm gonna fucking jump on it because it's fun and it's mm. easy and i i personally don't think he's smart enough to do anything about it the right way at least and it's been evident so um yeah that that's kind of that's that whole situation that's the tldr so um, is that like all the drama like is there because i mean there's there are tomato emojis in the um um i, the I don't know well, that might be the i mean because the drama was like I, that could be for a number of reasons to be honest there's like i've been it, it i don't know what the tomatoes for because i don't know this guy's from fucking finland so his problem could be just uh, anything i don't know and i don't know anything about this yoda's yoda but it's likely they're either followers of people that uh, his friend, uh, his fans or whatever. Um, I'm not sure. I've not looked into it, but yeah. Some, I mean, a lot of people that were in that watched the drama unfold likely didn't hear my side or didn't care to hear my side. They probably already didn't like me, so I just never paid any attention to it. Like the tomatoes, I was like, yeah, okay, well. I see. Good. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's something valuable, <laughs> you know. Nah, nah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's easy. First of all, online to just pick a side, not get the yep, full easy. details on things and yep. just follow suit with what it looks like the majority of people are doing. Um, yep. Now, as I've stated already a few times and people, I feel like generally know I'm not like a drama seeker. Like I, like I, I will literally be oblivious to people's past or I, yeah, I just don't care as long yep. as they're not being an asshole currently. Like as long as like they've yep. shown... Like if they, if nothing they've done has been actually harmful, or they've deeply apologized and made changes when it has been harmful, like it's just like you got to give people another chance. Yeah, and, I I think especially as a creator in a creator space, someone with an audience's influence, you you need to give people the benefit to say their piece. Even if all the evidence points towards like against them, you know, like you should be you should be allowed to have your voice heard before getting your audience to rally against someone else because that's what kind of happened with the Ditter thing. So I just I just wrote off a bunch of creators as like I went to a, a certain creator stream and he like didn't watch my side, didn't care for it, but then like kind of just rallied his viewers against me, and I was like, okay, that was kind of weird and. Like, if you were in that position, I'm sure you'd want to have people hear what you have to say. I don't care if you listen to what I have to say, but I think you should, if you're going to have an opinion on it, you should listen to what is being said before, just kind of misquoting and, and, and uh, backing up facts that you can't even verify yourself. But that's just the internet as well. Like, if it's viewers, like these people throwing tomatoes, I don't know who the fuck they are. They, 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 should, they don't matter anyway. No one's listening to them, so, like... That's, just, that's, well, that's, that's a viewer standpoint in my opinion yeah well thanks thanks for uh getting now i have a little bit of that lore background which <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was i was interested in yeah that's a, that's an interesting 
Um, that was an interesting <laughs> period this year. But in terms of creators, I just, yeah, least favorite creators, I, I really don't. I From what I've seen in terms of content, I don't think there's anyone that, like, I think shouldn't be making content at the moment. Like, yeah, I, it's... <laughs> I, I, I don't really think of it. Oh, there is one, actually, yeah. Um, what's his name? I miss. I got his name wrong the other day. Low budget IRS. I don't like that guy. Oh yeah, but, that that I've I actually yeah. I did hear about the controversy regarding that, and yeah, they're yeah. Yeah. Have, uh, he, to be he, fair, he, I haven't heard his side, but it doesn't seem like I need to hear well, his side because yeah, uh, he got a lot of evidence. Yeah, so a bunch of money, and um, then like hate rated uh, someone because they're a woman, and then his son like fully endorses it. I I, I don't know if he he hasn't verbally endorsed it, but when I brought it up to his son. He's completely like avoided the subject or tried to twist it or just straight up like reported me on Twitter. So, like, <sighs> Jesus yeah. Christ. It's, yeah, I, yeah, I don't like him. He's a problem. And then, like, his mods were like trying to like uh, blackmail people or not bla blackmail, but like, you know, DM and get people to not report him. No, no, don't give him another chance. Like, nah, he's a, he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a not good person. Yeah, I did, I did hear that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a, uh, that's a good take. Okay. Yeah. Rebel Montana, <laughs> uh, has three questions. How did the term Condor country get started? Uh, fuck me. So Rebel Montana is a viewer of mine. Everyone's living in Rebel's world when you, when you're discussing shit that he talks about. So just... He's um, he's a fucking character. <laughs> the con the term Condor Country doesn't exist. All right, Rebel, fuck off. <laughs> it's not a thing. <laughs> so there's no nothing more to that. Just it doesn't no, exist. There's okay. nothing more to that. I'm not <laughs> giving him that. <laughs> okay. Um, have you gotten any cool gifts from viewers? Yeah, Rebel Montana sent me a gummy bear, which lit my insides the fuck up. It was like a Carolina Reaper gummy bear. That wasn't Jesus. a cool gift though. But yeah. Uh, you I knew it was, he... though? Like, you knew it was Carolina yeah. Reaper? Before... Okay, it wasn't, like, yeah. just a gummy bear. <laughs> that you thought. No, he, he, he didn't try to spike me or anything. Okay. No, it was a real thing. It was the most uncomfortable, like, three hours <sighs> inside of me of my life after the stream. I... But he's, um, I mean, he personally has, I'm, I'm assuming he sent this, <laughs> he, he tweeted this just so that he could get the shout out, which, yeah, shout out to Rebel. He sent me a bunch of cool shit, like, a lot of, I mean, I don't follow NFL, but like he sent me a bunch of uh, Raiders stuff for me and my son, like a shirt with um, numbers on it and, and our names on it, which is really cool. Um, and then I got like a couple of boots as well that I do shoes out of because I, I live too far away from my my shoe person now, so I can't get more shoes <laughs> or shoes. But yeah, I, I, I used to have a shoe person. <laughs> I uh, ate a ghost pepper whole. Uh, once yeah and um, i was actually like in t like i couldn't sleep like it was nighttime yeah. when i ate it and then uh my stomach was burning so bad i thought i had to go to the hospital like i, I thought yeah. i was gonna need to like get it extracted from me somehow it's uh it's one of the most unpleasant experiences eating eating shit that spicy it's just like you, you only do it just to like you, you do it because someone's getting you to do it you don't do it for, for enjoyment cause yeah it is not absolutely fun. yeah no way um, would you make Rebel Montana a mod on your stream if he sends a donor of or a dono of a thousand dollars? I <clears throat> I don't believe that people should be modded because they donate a lot because that then creates parasocial problems down the line. And I'm not a sellout. However, in this case, <laughs> yes. <I will>. However. <laughs> All right, you heard it. You heard it. You heard the however. Okay. Um, let's see. Donovan just says, no questions, just appreciate the funny, no bullshit guides and saving me from reading the weekly updates. Thank you, Beast. Oh, yeah. Um, 22 or 221 Fart uh, asks, what in your opinion would make the Varlamore Coliseum a Grand Slam update? Um. That's a tricky one because the as the more hyped things get, the easier it is to be let down by it. Look at Cyberpunk, for example. So people are really 
loving this blue inferno idea right and then they they want something that is as engaging and as difficult and in depth as the inferno is um and i think it, it needs to tick those boxes to really i think while, while a lot of low, low low less experienced players won't be able to do it immediately like they did the inferno look at the inferno now as, it, uh, as opposed to when it was um first released barely anyone could do it now still barely anyone can do it they get paid that you know they pay to do it but there are people that can now do the inferno you learn and then you gradually become better at the game and then you get your inferno case. then you start doing multiple kcs and then you get your zuck helmet but i bet the first time the inferno came out you you probably couldn't you, you could barely pray flick prop properly so i think for it to be a grand slam update i think it needs to meet those expectations i don't know if it can the j mods are smarter than me obviously with with game development and all that shit and they've they've not really let me down in that aspect in the past. So, if they can achieve something that is more difficult and more fun than the, or just as fun as the Inferno is, um, like they kind of did with the Awakened Leviathan, um, I think that would be the ultimate update. I don't think it needs to be that big. But given the amount of uh, hype people are putting behind that idea, it's, it's mostly just end game players, to be honest. But if you can satisfy the end game players, you'll you'll satisfy the whole community eventually because everyone will like well not everyone but people will gradually get to that level. People then learn to do that sort of content. People that couldn't do theater of blood can now do it. People that couldn't do expert TOAs are now doing expert TOAs. Just as you practice and you develop yourself as a player. So if you can satisfy the the highest level of um, PVMers. You set a benchmark for people to then try and reach. I, I think that's what they need to try and do. Whether they can, I don't know. I'd like to think they can. I don't know how limiting the engine is in this aspect. But I think what we saw from bosses like Vardavis gives me hope that they have, like the whole clicking on the screen OC thing, like adding things like that. Who would have thought that would ever be in RuneScape? Yeah, for real. So that, that, that kind of came out of nowhere. And you're like, oh shit, this is like, what else can they do with mechanics like that? It doesn't all have to be clicking on the screen, but like, where where else can that can they go? Because you you you're always surprised with some of the shit that they pull off. So yeah, I I think they need to really. It it should be. I, I think it needs to be harder than the Inferno, or more prestigious at least than the Inferno to be a Grand Slam. But it, it doesn't need to be to be a, a successful update. Those are two different things, I think. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I was talking to Lake and Puggin just last week on the Coliseum. Mm. I don't really know much about it, nor nor does really anybody, but um. Yeah. I really hope that it's one of those things that's like a uh, enraged mechanic or not in wh whatever it's called where it's like you can see your loot before yeah. you well, move it's, on it's to the next wave. A gauntlet, but not like the gauntlet. Yeah. And yeah. then I really hope that it's limitless. Like I hope like you can continually go and push the limits like even further because I would love to see people like Port Kazard or like Wooks or just any god gamer just go hella far and it never ends yeah as much as i love having entry level like um opportunities in content like toa and like now tob i think it would be best if it doesn't have it either on release or at all which in my opinion was a problem with todd's release but that's also what really made tob for the end game that's what separated the men from the boys you know like that's what really drove people to want a PVM. It also drove people to be really slimy and gatekeep the content, which is the drawback from it. But you didn't really have that with the Inferno because it was either, I mean, people pay for content. They're always going to pay for the content to be completed. You can't stop that. But people that wanted to actually achieve the Inferno didn't have to rely on being taught by other people in the raid. Like you didn't have to pay GP for someone to, to teach you to do bloat. Mm -hmm. to do to do tob so i think if they don't have such an easy entry it'll probably succeed more as end game pvm but that does make it less engaging for the majority of the player base which is then a drawback for i, I, don't, I don't know what's more important to be honest I, I can't i think for the game it's probably more important to have entry level access or some some sort of entry level access but maybe at the level of like a, the gauntlet is a pretty decent middle ground because that that's got a, a, a good level of like um difficulty without it being taxing on the people trying to learn a lot of the time so just finding that balance i think yeah so let me just ask because like 
clearly like mm. you are just dedicated to iron man mode at this point in group iron man um yep like what really got you hooked onto iron man mode i know this is kind of like a little bit of a tangent but i just want to know like what was the thing when you first started that really got you hooked was it some sort of skill was it just like progressing your um, account in the early days or what to be honest my situation is a bit unique i had a i used to have a a contact inside jagex so i knew group iron was coming out 12 months before it was even announced so we had planned our team very early on and so there was just that that sort of buzz to like get ready for it and when it was coming it was like finally here and we just had this this five-man team that i would always raid with anyway two of them were my mates in real life who've now moved the accounts on to other people uh we kept the prestige but um they just don't play anymore and it, it just the way we progressed, like we had someone who was a, a nerd at Iron Man and he just like had all the supplies coming in and I was able to go and push my quest cape. I got my quest cape within two months on the Iron Man and I didn't think that was possible to for me to do at least. I didn't think I'd be that committed to it, but it just kind of like, I think it helped being kind of burnt out on the main because I was just tobbing every day and it, it got boring doing tob that, that much. Um, so I, I think it was just the refreshing grind and that sense of achievement that you kind of don't get as a main, like unlocking or even even just like getting your first Bofa. It's like it's better. The it, the enhanced weapon seed is better as a Bofa than it is as 90 mil. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it just feels, it's just different, man. And then, like, like it's an you, actual you thing you can only get from that piece of yeah. content as well. That's it. I, I feel uncomfortable playing on my main. Like if, if I get if I go for a, a raid on top with the guys and I pull a scythe on my main when that could have been the game or the hardcore, like how long is it going to be till I see another one? Like, <laughs> yep. Fuck. So I I, ha I guess that makes me anxious to play my main. So I just PK on the main now. That's it. Like the Woody Boss rework really brought me back and well brought me into PKing uh, properly. I guess. Um, but yeah, it was just playing the Iron Man. Having you, the anticipation going into it, yeah. So you say you PK, do you ever play dead man modes? I played the last two dead man modes. Um I played not the the one we just did, the one Reborn, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not which that is, one. I guess it was it was a bit I played I played Reborn. It was a bit of a oh, mistake okay. because that's where they had like the life system and I think that was a fucking terrible idea. Um, and like I, I was doing pretty well and then I got to the dig site and that place is just locked the fuck down by clans with cheat clans Like people see me coming before I've even rendered them on my screen and I'm dead and I was like, okay, I'm not playing this shit um, <laughs> And then same kind of the same again this year. I played this year, but I just kind of I, I safely got to raids We did some raids. We pulled back-to-back -back purples and cocks and then I was kind of done Mostly because I'm so focused on this hardcore Iron Man now like I just can't stop playing it but also, I find that it's not the same for PvP because a lot of it is, eventually you're going to run into a clan. Eventually there's content you've got to do where there is someone who is playing longer than you, um, getting funded money that you don't, that you can't compete with, and then you're just fucked. And you can rebuild pretty quickly, but I, I just, I feel like I'm, I'm more of a PKer than a PvPer. I'll, I'll happily PvP and I'll throw down with, with someone in the wood if I run into them, provided I'm not completely outgeared. But I just um, like once you once you run into someone who's running like javelins and a VLS and a Void Waker, and I'm sitting here with my fucking whip, it's like yeah, I'm I'm gonna get turned inside out real quick here. So it just yeah, it, it's it's more for in my opinion, it's more for people in in clans or that want to piggyback off of um, like other people to go out in teams, and I didn't have any interest in that, so. Otherwise, I did have fun, but it's a uh, once you once the first week's over, once you've made your gold, you just dip. Is what most people were doing. Uh, I found. Okay, here's a topic from Revis or Revus. Um, if you could update any skill in the game, which would it be, and what would you like to see added? And I'm also just going to exclude mining from here. Yeah, I was going to say let's not say mining yeah. after the start of this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> update which skill uh update any skill in the game which would it be and what would you like to see added i um i mean i think the easy answer oh no it's not really i was gonna say agility but 
thing um, is, is like agility really could be updated for the earlier levels yeah. because it really just seems like you just do rooftops until at That's some it. point you want to do sepulcher if you even do want to do that. And if you don't do rooftops, then you don't get the graceful. It feels mandatory. That's fine. Yeah. But then it's it's rooftops until either you go Prif or you go Sepulchre, which I don't think is really worth until level 82. And so Prif is literally four. just rooftops, basically. Like That's it's just it. The, it's Prif the same mechanics. Rooftop. Yeah. Um, and if you're an Iron Man, it's like if you're not doing rooftops, you're like, wh where, where are you going to get your stamina from? Like, you're just kind of fucked. Yeah. So it does feel like it kind of just, I mean, it's boring as shit. It, it, it is. I, I do not enjoy running rooftops. I try to do agility. I'm sorry, alking while I do it. But how do you, like, what do you just set up a treadmill so you get 20k XP an hour, like shooting stars <laughs> and, and getting fuck all out of it? Like, it was actually. I, mean, I, should, I shouldn't suggest that because people might want that. But yeah. Like, you know, what do you. I so, feel like it could be. I think shortcuts are a bit underwhelming. I, I made a bit of a I made a video a while ago which was just a bit of a, a opinion on making run energy irrelevant outside of combat in certain zones so that you didn't have to rely on your run running out when doing birdhouse runs farm runs running from like lumbage to Valk. but if you're in the wilderness in an instance in raids in combat then your run starts to deplete and acts as normal just to make it more let less inconvenient for people that just want to fucking run around yeah there, I think there, if yeah there's Sorry. a lot of um it, it's really it's really tough to say when because i would love a just energy rework like running and walking rework like yeah entirely but it's really hard to know where to pinpoint that without making stamina as completely obsolete and without yeah. making like like in blast furnace you'd still make run energy matter so people would still use stamina's there um, as, soon, as soon as you enter combat, it starts like if you get hit by a dragon running through under the mist guild, your run energy will start to drain. But then, when you're out of combat, it will start to recharge. Things like that could, like that could help, I think. And it, that might just make the skill. But then again, it might make it less like people will be less designed to train it. But I, I think the shortcuts are also really underwhelming. The only ones that matter, in my opinion. Uh, that I can uh, recall are uh, the ones in the rev caves to escape PKs. Like those are big. Um, the ones for rune crafting, like the the true blood altar. Um, otherwise, half the time it's like more convenient to just fucking run around <laughs> the shortcut than actually do it. Like the cow fight layer is really good as well, but like the one for the hydra is, I, I think slower than running around to, towards the hydra which was the, the point was just so you don't take damage but that was so I feel like, stupid I like they, they, the shortcut like hydra just like instant. Yeah. hydra and wyverns they they added a shortcut to yeah. wyverns and even that they add this fucking black screen for like 20 seconds yeah. like stop I would be it opposed to removing the shortcut animations like i don't need to see my guy climb under the fucking wall just like put me on the other side of the wall like in uh your nil when you click the the, the wall yes I mean, thank I you do that like I, I don't need to see myself maybe in the wilderness for the sake of like interrupting pvp and like animations but like yeah or just just, just make the animation the fast like it, yeah. even if like your nil wall like just had some crazy animation where your dude just like one ticks fucking climbs over somehow like just do it's it but vault vault make it just yeah just yeah. make it just as fast yeah yeah i think that that would be really nice that would make that would at least make the shortcuts feel more worth it. Like, if you're running to Port Saren from Drana, you're not going to use the wall half the time. Some people do, but, like, you know that you're barely... I, th I think you're only saving, like, a second or something. Um, so I, I think agility could, could do with some uh, quality of life. Yes, for sure. Totally um, agree. But, yeah, because, like, Brimhaven Agility Arena isn't... Like, it's if you do it consistently and never miss a ticket for, like, a thousand hours, then you're getting like better xp per hour than rd rooftops i'm pretty sure but you have to be consistent you can't really afford to stand still and that's a thousand minutes of just grabbing tickets and then you got to turn them all in and then how many marks of grace did you just miss yeah now they doing that, you know? like, I, I actually do like the classic brim or uh yeah brim haven course yeah i used to fuck with it a lot but then i just but it's just not rewarding yeah. at all i mean it's just yeah like they if they were to buff the XP of that place and make it so... Um, well, one of the things I, th I thought would be really cool... I actually made a video specifically on this like a year and a half ago or something. Is like, 
Just make it so the ticket dispensers are local to you. And as soon as you click one, it goes to the next one immediately. Yeah. So that's there isn't like this awkward shot. downtime of just like, what the hell am I doing? Yeah, here? one a minute. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. That'd be really that's fun. Not a, that's, that's not a bad buff because the the I think it, it, it being higher XP per hour than rooftops is a good trade-off for you getting nothing but XP out of it as opposed yes. to marks. And you can't really... I mean, you could ALK while doing it, but you won't be able to ALK as effectively too. So that's probably not a bad balance. That would be um, really cool if they yeah. did that. Yeah, that's not too bad actually. Yeah, that that place needs some love because it really. I mean, that really is. When I think of when I was playing in two thousand four, two thousand five, that Brimhaven course, that was like so badass. I just remember entering there and I'm like, agility is the coolest skill in this entire game because yeah. of this course. I, I do, I do enjoy running it. It's just yeah, not worth it. But that's where I got my first ever pet. I remember oh, I got it at like. I got, I think it was like 55 agility. I got the pet and then I went to work and I came home and the pet was gone. And I was like, what the fuck? What because the... you can't have followers in there. So it logged in invisible. Oh, I see. So I, I left, I tried to go back in and the parrot's like, you can't go in there with followers. And I'm like, there is no fucking follower. Like, what? <laughs> I can't see him, but I just had to relog. But like, it's yeah, good. that was like my yeah. first pet. I was like, yeah, wow. that's, that's badass. That's fucking so sick. So I have a bias. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that would be, uh, there's obviously, like, every skill needs to be updated at the end of the day, but we just, there's just simple balancing changes that could be made mm -hmm. that would just make the experience way better for most skills. Okay. Um, Arcus asks, who was the first content creator you really got into? And uh, he also wants to know when you got, or when you first started playing RS. Um, I first started playing RS in like mini clip days early, early on. Brief, brief memories of classic, but like early two thousand three, I'd say you could you could argue is when I really started to play as a kid. Took a break, did the same break everyone did. Every so often you stop and you start. Got a console, so I stopped playing RuneScape. Then I started playing RuneScape. Then ESC happened, and I stopped. And then I've been playing old school RuneScape since day one. Um. But it, content, uh, what was it the first content creator you really got into? I, I think the like there wasn't really one. There kind of still isn't one really. Like I've never really sat there and watched whole like a fat chunk of any RuneScape series. I don't think like I've watched everything like PJ and T Papa have put up recently. I've watched a fair bit of like Tasty and shit. Of course, I watched a lot of Solar Mission. I guess back in the day, but. Yeah, maybe it probably would be Solar Mission. Because I, I honestly never even watched um, Swampletics. I, I never watched any of Settled's. I only watched the last two, the, the movies he did. Mm. I, I just never got into, like, uh, Snowflake stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I never, I never really watched it until, yeah, his last two movies. Um, obviously, I watched Gilnor Games when that comes out. Um, but otherwise, yeah, there's not really anyone that really stood out. Um, okay, that's fair. To me... Um, yeah. Well, that's interesting you brought up Gilinor Games because his next question is, would you participate in Gilinor game, Games if given the opportunity? I, I I think I would. Part of me, like obviously it'd be great um, for exposure and you know it'd be great fun to do and, and work with other creators, of course. There's no denying that. The only problem I have is what I don't like about like most collaborations is that I then have to do something about it i have to make sure that i'm free i have to have i have to rely on people i have to have people rely on me so i, I mean i'll make the i'll make the commitment where i have to but yeah. the thought of it is like, Fuck, man. like yeah okay if i get voted off week one sweet i've only got to do a little bit of work but it, like if i'm on there until like the final weeks that's months of like making sure i'm awake at hours i don't want to be fucking awake at to, to yeah you know? yeah so, yeah yeah no i, I feel it i feel yeah. it I, i'm just laughing because it's, it's so <laughs> fucking yeah just relatable yeah okay but, but the, the opportunity gilnor games provides obviously outweighs that like if, if if given the opportunity yeah i would like there's very little reason for me to say no at the end of the day absolutely mm. okay frick banks asks will you be the first group iron man with a zuck helm um I probably could have if I never started a hardcore. But 
Probably not because I'm too invested in the hardcore. The problem that my team has with Zuck Helmets is we just don't have the gear. Like we have one Scythe, one Tebow, no Shadow. We just can't, we can't catch a Shadow. Um, and even then, that we still need more than that for the team group iron, um, like all the speed runs and stuff. But like, if we had the gear, I, I would have um, tried to push for it a lot more. I'm, I'm pretty close to Master. I'm like 70 points off Master. I just haven't like played it properly since the hardcore started. So probably not now, but I, I reckon I could have given it a good shot if I didn't make this hardcore. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, so, well, I guess it's not really as related. I was just curious if you have any thoughts on if they're going to make the, uh, awakened versions of the desert treasure two bosses part of the Zuck helmet. Do you have any thoughts on that? Like, we don't know if they are or not, but like, um, if it's a, a if task, it's going to be a requirement. Yeah. If it's going to be a task. Oh, for it, I, I would say it's absolutely going to be, it, it would, it would, it's got to be a grandmaster task to get one kill, right? Or at least a kill under a certain time. Even I would say See, that's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm thinking it will be, and it'll just be, just get a kc it'll either be it'll either be just a kc because they they should have done these combat tasks by now it's yeah been i'm surprised they haven't yeah for so real. am i i thought they were gonna do it last week they might do it this week but i think um it, it depends what sort of times they're seeing and what sort of strategies they're seeing they might try and make they might make it a master to get a kill but then grandmaster to get a kill under a certain time i think while that's a bit excessive i think that'd be like that, I think that's also a good thing because that, that adds that element of challenge people are probably looking for when going for the Zuck Helm. Mm. Probably pain in the ass, but as long as the time isn't like when for Sunny Nightmare challenges first came out, it was like almost impossible to get that the original like 715 or whatever it was before they changed it. Yeah, like, that, was, <laughs> that was that crazy. was crazy. I actually yeah, got it. I got like a 659. I was like, let's fucking fuck go. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that really was insane. Like it was genuinely just RNG, yeah. just pray to God. Yeah with it max gear like, why <laughs> yeah. yeah um okay whoa is wondering about the mole slipper manipulation so i also saw just some I brief don't know what tweets you're talking about no never what is it. that we, we gotta no. hear it we gotta hear I don't what, know what you're talking about what's nope. going on with the mole slippers you didn't see anything there's no mole no so for legal reasons this has nothing to do with me there was also something regarding third age manipulation uh and apparently there was like a huge dump lately like people were yeah, like Yeah, I think it's just a couple of I think it's like a handful of people buying and selling their own third age to drive the price up. Mm. Um I think the axe has gone up because of the forestry announcements. And people are gonna want the two handed third age axe, so there's they're just playing on that hype. I see. But like people are putting third age pickaxes on the forums for sale for like six to seven bill. Uh but like are they actually getting sold for that much? I fucking doubt it. Like there's a difference between listing a price of an item and actually making the sale. So um, in terms of manipulation, I think people are just, uh, I reckon it's a, it's either a clan or a group of people like trying to drive the price up and hoping that someone tries to buy in on it as, as it's rising before it's too late. Cause I, I can't see any other reason why people would be fucking with it. Like there's no benefit to owning third age except to, flex like, and just flex, to, right? I, yeah. I mean when you have so much money it's like what else are you gonna buy yeah so um i think that's probably what's happening okay. in my opinion but yeah as for the mole slippers i um i i can't speak on that legally but they seem to be on the rise to hit <laughs> 30 mil and be worth more than primordials very soon oh, so if i was to invest i would right now but see i uh, yeah when are we when are we able to attach a primordial crystal to mole slippers oh please that that'll be good are you fucking crazy the the primal primordial the, yeah primordial yeah, there, you there, yeah. there you go jagex good idea yeah um okay actually there's somebody's just uh, somebody named duke is just whenever i see duke now i just think of duke mining uh <laughs> this is going to be the greatest forestry debate of all time what are your thoughts on forestry i honestly haven't had the chance to do forestry yet huh. so I've, I've done a little bit um on the release day and then i did um like i was like running rooftops in sears village with my axe 
and some dickhead was like cutting trees but wasn't doing the forestry update so i did it and i just got it in time and i just spent the whole time like calling him an idiot for not doing it like why the fuck aren't you helping me what's wrong with you so um <laughs> that was good fun but i haven't actually got priff done on my hardcore yet so i i figured the priff's probably the best place to do it so i just haven't touched it yet but from what i've seen like I know a lot of people aren't very happy with it or they feel like it was kind of a wasted update or it's pointless changes. I I haven't seen like any like directly negative impacts to the game in terms of like I guess integrity or or it's uh um like just implementing it. I I don't feel like it's actually set the game back. It might just, it might feel like a bit of a waste of an update for some people, but yeah, I, I don't think it's actually bought, like, it, I, I have a similar opinion to Shooting Stars, I guess. Like, it's it's done nothing but bring more people into the skill that otherwise wouldn't have trained it, I think. I mean, you can go to the Woodcutting Guild and avoid it altogether. That's what I do. I just woodcut magic logs in the guild because it's just easier to bank and I don't have to fuck with the forestry because I AFK woodcutting anyway, so. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I've, I've talked about uh, forestry so much. I'm just like, ugh, I don't even want to share my yeah, thoughts no, that, it's just fair. yeah um but it is cool knowing that you know some people really enjoy the update and i'm i'm okay with you know an update coming out people enjoy it i try even if i'm not a huge fan i just try to be like okay you know what like yeah give it a shot and see what it's about at least yeah okay um let's see comms rad uh He's he says oh, ask yeah. if he's willing to do a shoey right now. No. Are you willing to? I'm not. No. It's <laughs> four twenty. Shout out four twenty in the morning, and uh, I've only got two beers left that I need to be ready for the subathon with. So I'm going to pass on that. Okay. I mean, look. <laughs> I mean, I could. No, you don't need to. That's fine. I, mean, um, I, I could put it in the. I could put it in there if you put it on the video if you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. All right. All okay. Right. Kiosk Bane uh, asks, hypothetically, what Australian animal would you like to see as a PVM encounter? I'm just, um, thinking, I'm just thinking a kangaroo. That's all I know. Yeah. Um, kangaroo encounter would be, actually could, be pretty badass. You could do a boxing kangaroo, kind of like Tekken did. I mean, everyone in my chat is confident they could take on a kangaroo in a fucking fist fight, which I'm confident they, they, they couldn't, but yeah, I reckon like a, a, a mad kangaroo boss would actually be pretty sick. I mean, koalas are just too fat and lazy. They're, they're just, they're shit. So we, we don't really need koalas. And then you've got, what else do we have? Wombats are just fat and shit, but they're in the water. Platypuses. You could, I mean, you could do like a Zebac sized platypus. That'd be pretty cool. But, um, or like an, an echidna. Is, is it an echidna, I think? Or it's kind of like an, it's kind of like a porcupine, I guess. But mm. no, I think kangaroo is the easy answer, but probably the best answer as well. Yeah. I, can, I mean, a kangaroo fight. Imagine this. You're in the desert. Yeah. yeah. Imagine a desert encounter with a kangaroo, but you can only box it. Like, like yeah. you can't yeah, use you a have weapon. To have boxing you... gloves, even? No, no, not boxing gloves. You just like fist fight. Just straight up fisting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, sorry. Yeah, straight up fist fight. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, no, that that, that wouldn't be too bad. Even if it was like a a slay monster, and then the superior encounter was like it had to be unarmed, and it's just like this really fucking tedious fight where he's just kicking the shit out of you, and you're like trying dude, to punch this kangaroo. <laughs> dude, imagine they came out with a new skill. So instead of like sailing, or maybe even on top of sailing, like imagine they came out with martial arts skill so this skill oh, dude, is all... opening a can of worms here dude <laughs> dude th this skill is all about fighting with no armor and no weapons but you get really hella good at it and so you have like gauntlet challenges and stuff where it's just you and like who, who knows like maybe martial arts would introduce like um different styles of attack where like you could just attack super fast and like rabbit and have like special attacks with your fists and like special attacks with your kicks and stuff. As, That'd be as, dope. As, as dangerously close to EOC as that sounds. Wait, do, wait, do they me, do that in, in RuneScape 3? Well, it reminds me more of when they added like that monk class to WoW. And it was like everyone's using swords and bows and stuff. And then you have this one class. They just run around just fucking start fly kicking motherfuckers. <laughs> That's and it's just so like, cool. What the hell is going on? Yeah, like you do a raid and this panda is just like doing flips and shit. It's just... <laughs> 
like obese bear is just fucking people up with its feet and hands. I'm like, it was actually pretty badass to watch. Um, but you're, you're opening a fucking can of worms if, if, if you suggest that to the RuneScape community. Oh Fuck my me. God. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be really medieval, but it'd be cool. Hmm. Interesting. What was your uh, choice on the three skill pitches? Um, it was it went shamanism, taming, then sailing. I, I was very anti sailing mm. at first. My mind has been changed since um, with all their videos and stuff. But I, I was I've, I've tried to remain somewhat, if not biased, at least um, over on the fence or just level headed about all the skills because at the end of the day. People go, oh yeah, we want shamanism. Shamanism would have been way better than sailing. At this point, it wouldn't because we know what sailing offers, and shamanism, we don't know what that offers beyond that initial pitch. So, like, granted, it hasn't had the chance. But what if shamanism offered everything sailing offers? Just you do it in the this, this spirit realm or whatever. Then, like, would it be a problem? Would you even care? Like, I feel like a, a lot of the time it was just the hate that came from the name and came from the original meme back in the day obviously there's concerns about the way it's implemented to the game but um originally i, I was going to go shamanism because i liked the way that that first sounded and then taming i felt was also good because the the thing i have with sailing is that i still definitely feel now is that i think as content it sounds good and it looks great i just had my own concern for whether it being a skill was either too limiting or too out of character Mm. whereas if you for example like you go to the core in favor tab and you go view tasks or even just go to the combat tasks tab like what if sailing was just a, its own standalone concept not a mini game not a skill but it was a like in a log format where you could progress through sailing any way you wanted in any order there was no need to have a min max strategy to get to 99 the fastest but instead you could tackle it in different ways and just yeah un unlock different content whether it's content for the boat content for sailing itself content on other islands um and just kind of yeah have, have i feel like that would have had a, a more a, a bigger ceiling and been more accessible for people but at the same time you could do that with the skill um just fine maxing it out at 99 so i, I don't really think it's going to be that bad um and we won't know till we see the beta but originally i was definitely like nah fuck sailing for sure yeah i was uh i was actually pro team taming initially until they actually yep. gave their pitch and then i was like this sounds hella boring because they they were so scared of implementing it into the game so it was just like kind of yeah. like a pocket pets adventure where you just go to like your training grounds with your pets and just like i think the coolest thing that intrigued me about it initially was just the idea of having almost like a pokedex like almost like a collection yeah. log for pets where you collect all these awesome pets and then you can like level them up. So you almost got like inception runescape. You got like runescape inside runescape where you're leveling up your character, but then you can also level up these other characters in your character. Like, yeah. I thought, I thought and I understand kind of people were worried that it would devalue their current pets. I, I totally get that. Yeah. I also it, feel like taming and shamanism almost offered the same content. It was just whether you wanted it in form of pet or in form of, going to the spirit realm and, and doing whatever the rituals there were. Like, for example, you could have a certain pet following you that buffed, like if you had a blood veil pet and that buffed the way your scythe charges worked, what's the difference between that and then like applying a, a buff to your sang staff so that the blood charges work differently? Like, so it was just the way that it was implemented, which is cool, but it's also just something to keep in mind with skills that just because it has a name and a pitch doesn't mean it can't provide content that you want from another skill. Like they can always try to bring that in. I just thought if they, I mean, sense. I wasn't that um, against the name shamanism, but it really just yeah. didn't roll off a tongue nicely That's in fair. people. And it so, was weird to hear, yeah. Dude, if they, if they would have just called it spirit, like the new skill is called spirit, and you mm. enter the spirit realm and you, whatever the hell, like that, I'm pretty sure it literally would have passed if it was just renamed spirit or just anything yeah. just simple. I think they, they definitely, the name was a bit, um, there's just, definitely something that didn't it didn't feel right the first time hearing it. It feels alright now, I guess, but at first it was like 
what the fuck is shamanism? Like, but they kept doubling down on it too. Yeah. Like we'd, we'll watch the Q and A's and people were like, why the hell is it called shamanism? And they're like, we talked for a long time about it and we agree that this is the best name it could possibly have. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. that's the best? Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a... Yeah. It's definitely I... it's one of the names of all time. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the other concern was just gear getting like untradeable upgrades so like mm. base inevitably you would you know shamanism would come out and then you would need like these four attachments from the spirit realm for this piece of armor and four from this and like it just becomes such a convoluted mess and you're basically trolling if you don't have like these four upgrades to this and just it, i feel yeah, like it'd it kind of just narrows down what content like what like you, you have the skill that offers all this content for your gear, and then it's like, well, if you're not using this buff, you're wasting your time. It's like, well, then what's the fucking point in all these other buffs? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of tough. Okay, um, let's see. Red Ribbon asks, why are mullets the only hairstyle that Aussie barbers can legally cut? Um. I don't know how to answer that for most people. I mean, I, I'm not one personally, but most people with mullets that I see are crackheads. So um, I'm, I'm not sure it's a barber cutting them, to be honest. Yeah. Probably they're unhinged wives or something. I don't know. Like, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> that's fine. That's fair. I wouldn't know how to, how to either. Okay. Garrett says, this is this is the one I've been waiting for. So he asks a couple questions. Should some yeah. grinds be slow and painful to gate keep max cape? No. I I think gatekeeping is what gatekeeping mostly does is introduces a black market and a bad stigma and um scams more than anything. It creates people that they get desperate, like people with gatekeeping theater of blood. If you didn't have a, like, especially when the Inferno came out, you don't have an Inferno cape, you're not raiding. People can't do the Inferno. They go buy it. They then buy it. I mean, it still happens now. Even T Tob's like the best example. You go to World 416 to find a Tob team, and, like, you've got some guy with an Inferno cape, full Torva, 200kc. Great, looks good. Turns out that 200kc, he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He gets into Verzik. Your, your whole team's dead except you and then the guy with 200kc. And you don't make it to webs. He starts running webs. He runs webs the opposite direction. Gets caught. Blames his team for getting him caught. And then dies. And it's like... What? Like, this is all because of just gatekeeping. And people feeling the need to pay to be accepted into content. And, like, that's just one small example. That actually did happen um, to, to a friend of mine. I watched it happen on, on live. And I was like, this is just fucking too good. But... That's just all. That's the more gatekeeping there is, in my opinion, the more people are willing to go through to either cheat, lie, um, pay, be taken advantage of, or take advantage of other people. Because oh, I bought my KC for top. I should now be entitled to be paid to teach you, rather than teaching people for the sake of teaching raids. Like people always feel like they either deserve to be owed something, or there needs to be a fee in return for taking you through Theater of Blood another clan uh, there was a clan i was invited to recently um just to inspect what they have to offer and they do teaching at top but if there's a purple you get 50 percent of what your split would have been and if you die that 50 percent drops by five percent every time you die and i'm like but you finished the raid and got the purple what like why does his split why is his split worth less like it doesn't change whether you're getting a cypher or a, a hill like these are real things that clans do and I, I just think that that is, you, you've got to be like out of your fucking mind to one, pay for that service, and two, to even think that you're like in a position to offer that because that just creates more idiots, right? And it's just, it's just, I, I think it's bad. But then again, like people are going to do whatever they can to make money, aren't, aren't they? So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, I agree with half of it, or uh, I yep. at least, I, I think, um, no, just for his... I think you're right, but uh, he, he says, should some grinds be slow and painful? I don't think any grind should be painful. I think it's okay mm. if some are slow, like slower than others. Yeah, I think it's others. okay if they're slow. I think the slower they are, the more they should be at least enjoyable or somewhat beneficial in another way. 
Yeah, no, exactly. The slowest skill should be like the most rewarding. Like that yeah. would make sense as long as, you know, they're engaging enough. But nothing, nothing should be made painful for the sake of pain. Like when I think of painful grinds, I think of sulfur mining. I mean, what the Rose fuck Den. is going on there? Ro uh, to be honest, Rogue's Den's not even bad because now you can do it uh, in like an I, hour. I went so dry at Rogue's Den. <laughs> they, didn't, they, that place. didn't they literally up, like, update it to make they it did. so you just fully complete it in like an hour now? Like, you don't get dupes anymore? They may have done that, but I... I don't think you get dupes anymore. Yeah, yeah, because you you choose what piece you want now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's getting the fucking box. Like, when I fail six, seven, eight in a row, I'm just like... (laughs) Like, it's almost worth just doing Master Farmers about it. (laughs) Yeah, but um, imagine that grind was, like, on average, like, 16 hours. Like, that would be bad. Yeah. But it's... I think it's average, like, two hours or something. Yeah, it's one of the faster kits to get in the game. Thankfully. Yeah, for for sure. Um, but the like the other painful things, in my opinion, are MTA. Now MTA is not like essential yeah. by any means, but like, brother, what the fuck is going on there? Like, it's just... even if they made it double points after hard, so you still had to get the bones to peaches, but then like, do your hard diary, then go for the master wand and the book and the or like if you wanted to, just to make it less cancerous the, the thing is is like fun. that doesn't make it less cancerous just like i mean okay speeding it up technically does make it less cancerous but like why not just just i, I don't know like for example the telekinetic grab room can we please update the spell like mm-hmm. why are you stalled in place until the thing comes back to you why can't you fucking yeah, that's move kind of shit <laughs> like allow <laughs> you to move bad. allow you to have unlimited run energy in that room like just like things like that that's just makes make the statue dude move like double time like i don't know just yeah i wish i took advantage of when coin pouches first came out Mm-hmm. You were able to take your coin pouch into the outer room, then open it and deposit the gold. So people <laughs> oh, just really? still eight, nine. Holy yeah. shit. Holy yeah, I wish shit. I'd, I only found out about it when it got patched. I was like, fuck, man. If I knew that, I would have just like... Oh, my milk. God. That, in my opinion, that's the worst room. People just steal uh, 28 pouches, go to Mage Training Arena, open them up, and then just like... You would max that room so fucking quick. Yeah, Alchemy Room is actually the worst room. It's, by, yeah, it's worse it's like, than Telekinetic. Yeah, people disagree with that, but they're wrong. Alchemy is the fucking worst, absolutely. It's so bad. Like you're you're sitting there and it's like um Oh my god. It, it's like it's like being in like the a really boring class in high school and just staring at the clock. Just like yeah. when the fuck is this over? That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. Um Okay, semi related is the accessibility of TOA a problem, and should raids four have a similar invocation slash entry mode system? Um, that kind of tracks back to what I said about the the Coliseum. I think T- TOA was a success, right, because of how accessible it is. Like, all you have to do is stream and just say, "Oh, what raid do you want to see?" Most people are going to say TOA because they are. It's relatable to. The majority of the player base they can do it they can see it it's also the newest to be fair but mm-hmm. i i think it's just the fact that it was so accessible where tob wasn't is why it's so much more popular than tob granted i think tob's a better game uh, sorry better raid because i i just i think it's just way it's the design is so much better it's more consistent it's more fun and i think that tier way it falls flat in a few places personally but yeah i, I think having the entry mode is important for a raid success does that harm the raid um as a piece of endgame content i think it also does at the same time so you have to find the balance does that mean raids 4 should have an entry mode i don't know it's hard to say because it like do you want it to be like tob do you want to be like toa or do you want to try and be like cox where it's you can just brute force it if you absolutely need to I, I don't know. That's a tricky one. I don't think the invocation system is good. I think it sucks. Uh, mostly because I, I was under the impression that they were going to update it progressively so that it would change or at least increase the levels, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. So it kind of just feels like why not just have like, I guess, base settings. I, I, it's cool that you can customize it, but I just think you have a certain layout you're going to use and there's some you're never going to touch, right? So it's just more dead content. 
So I, I don't think an invocation system would. I don't know. I don't reckon they'll try it again. I'd be surprised if they did for raids four. But that's another thing I didn't like about them pitching skills. Um, if you don't mind me going back to that for a second, is like when they're like, "Oh, sailing, we could have an underwater raid," or "Taming could be a pet raid." I feel like that's a that was a cheap way to pitch a skill. Like you shouldn't try to get people to vote for a skill based on the fact that there might be a raid someday for it. Like, yeah, it's it's just a bit. Yeah, that's fair. Feels yeah, it's a bit, bit silly to try and yeah, absolutely. Like, you could you could promise anything then at that point, and people are gonna change their mind completely on it. And I, I yeah, I, I just think it's a bit weird. But yeah, I'm not sure they'll do invocations again personally. But I think invocation. I said this on the Lake and Puggin cast last week. Is like mm. invocation system would be great for more mid to high level content. Yeah. Like they're coming out with a new dungeon. That's supposed to be like mid-level dungeon. Like that would be a great place for invocations, where it's like something yeah. where it kind of engages everybody yeah, at a very low level up to a pretty high level if you wanted it to. And it's kind of like this learning thing. Like, like if TOA had come out, if if TOA had come out and that it had more been like a mid-level piece of content that doesn't have like all the best in slot uniques, like it still would have been massively successful. And they could have even made it like. Yeah more rewarding for the lower end of players just not have like all the best in slots like I, I don't know i feel like that would be a great system but for end game raids like raids four lake Pugan and i all agreed like it would be cool if on release there's just regular mode and maybe challenge mode if they've already solved it and they've already you know made the decision like what what's challenge mode or not but then three to six weeks later then they release entry mode so yeah you have all the hype of a brand new raid came out so only like these gamers can really do it and it feels like tob release again but then very shortly after you have entry mode come out that now allows players that want to just really practice and get good at it and then start being able to do the real thing have that entry mode but i think I personally think invocation systems for end game raids is just not the move. Even though I will say it's very accessible and it gets everyone involved, I just think like there needs to be some prestige when it comes to these end game raids. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, top entry mode came out way too late. Oh yeah, I think way it could have come late. out. It like could have came out four way years earlier. Late, yeah, absolutely. Um, and like if you look at top, there's no invocation system, and some people are like why don't they add invocations to the top it's like have you done that raid like what do you want to what do you want to add to it do you want to make it easier and then add invocations to bring it to where it is because that that would just ruin the raid to be honest yep like, no it's so, so it, and like, it, it makes it, it, it it makes it so much easier just to have one difficulty and then a yeah. hard mode but something that lake uh or pug and one of them had mentioned was like entry mode top would be a lot better if they didn't mess around with the mechanics at all, but it was simply the exact same fight, just you're only taking like 20% of the damage. So yeah. you're actually practicing what's going to go yeah. on in the real thing. You're ignoring half the rooms. Like, exactly. Maiden is just like one spider with eight health, and you're like, it's going to ignore that. But, <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. It's, so, it's a bit of so, a joke. <laughs> exactly. They need to make the raid like the same, but just make it so it's less punishing. That's what they really need to do for entry mode, personally. Like yeah. that, that would actually help you to learn. Yeah. Because for a lot of people, and I bet you can remember this as well, like everybody struggled on Verzik. Like when yep. you first went to Verzik, you're like, what the hell am I doing? Like, how do I how do I do the back click thing? Like, head around the timing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it, it's just, it's your first time in the room. And if you don't really understand the time and nobody's told you or anything, like it's a mess. But if there was an entry mode, that's just, Oh, you're only taking five damage whenever you mess up. Like that yeah, would help so much out. more. Yeah. But I think having it on release makes it too easy for people to suss out the mechanics and then get the harder yes. content done straight away. So I think, yeah, having it, Having no entry mode on release will upset people because they're like, what about us learners and news? To be honest, that's kind of the point of the end game content. I think it's, yeah, it'd be it'd be better for a raid's release. It does also mean that people will be mad because only people that can do the raid then have access to these high value uniques. But again, that's the point of the raid. So yeah, I, I think uh, that I, I agree with that. That's what I kind of felt um, and I've kind of always felt about 
raids just what as soon as Todd released entry mode, I was like, this is like like years too late. This is ridiculous. Um, and when it happened with TOA, I was kind of like on the edge because we did like yeah, one fifties pretty much straight away and. You do 150s now, and it's like piss easy. It's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you but do 300s, you know, and it feels piss oh, dude. easy. Uh, yeah, I, I died in 300s if I, like, you know, misclick a skull skip or something. I just take full damage, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, but, yeah, no, my chat will argue that I die more than I should, but... Um, <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, I remember I, on release, like, 300s were like, oh, oh my God, yeah, you're, you're like, insane. Oh, my God, 300, yeah, and now it's like... Yeah, three hundreds, coward. Why are you doing four fifties? Like, yeah, fuck yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is now. Just where's your fan kit? And then you just accuse people of buying theirs, and then it's just a, a stalemate. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think that's the best way to go about it. Have an entry mode come out, even if it's like yeah, two, two, two or three weeks later, because it it won't take long to solve content. Ever since the Inferno, like the Inferno, really did just open everyone's eyes um, to what is possible and what people are capable of that let's be real if new content comes out the highest level players figure it out almost instantly the people that are like they're they live and breathe end game content it will take less than a day for them to figure out the desert treasure 2 bosses it's not because they were poorly implemented or designed it's just like the the skill level of people is so good they know how the game works they know how the engine works they know they see something they can figure out what tick is it on can i tick eat it can I redemption flick it? Is it going to, you know, can I pray against it? Like, that's it, really. Once they find out what the boss is weak to, they've got the strategy down. So it's going to be hard for them, for Jagex to really, like, push that boundary again. But, yeah, I reckon they can do it if they pull it off. Okay. Uh, these are some interesting topics, but uh, I'll, I'll let you take a jab at them. Chris yep. Scholes asks, was Australia a police state during COVID? I don't even know what that means. Probably not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Australian football or rugby? Uh, neither, to be honest. <laughs> Are they, aren't, what, what's Australian football? Uh, it's kind of like, um, it, I mean, it's just a big... You could argue it's it, 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 the similar thing it has to American football is the, the ball is an oval shape, like an egg, but that's about it. It's it's not like any other sport on the planet. It's I don't know. I don't follow it personally. I'm not really into it, but people get pretty hyped over over here. Okay. The, the, the field is a big oval, and you've got to kick a ball between the poles, but if someone catches it, then the game stops until they kick it again, and if someone catches it, then the game stops, but if they drop it, it keeps going. It's just like, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What is your first memory of playing RuneScape? Um, getting stuck in Drain of Manor and I couldn't get out because I didn't know that you had to go out the back door. So doing Ernest the Chicken with no, didn't know Rune HQ existed. And I'm just like, what are these levers downstairs? And then the account, so I've, I've still got, I mean, it probably wouldn't be now because they changed the birth up around, but there's like two or three accounts back in the day that were definitely never logged back in again in that fucking basement for sure. Me and my brother would be sitting there like, nah, this is fucked. And then one day we found out we can go out the back door and it was like a game changer. I thought we like broke the game. It was awesome. Dude, I just, I, guess it was only, I just loved how with just so many fucking just brain dead children are playing this game and have no idea what they're doing. And the Gower brothers don't give a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, like, we could come out with this. It's really easy to figure out the fuck off. <laughs> Dude, the haunted house. I mean, for real though, I remember... Oh, man, I remember sitting down in that cellar in Drainer Manor for, I mean, I'm not even kidding, like eight hours, just one Saturday, just fucking clueless on the levers. I just could not figure it out. Yeah. It's so bad. Yeah, I definitely reset the account. A couple, like, made a couple of new reset. accounts getting stuck in there. Yeah. Oh, my God. See, that place was actually, like, haunted, too, back then. Like, that yeah. Drainer Manor was terrifying when i was a kid yeah like the trees that would attack you i thought like they could one shot you potentially so i'd always like mm. i don't know i was scared of that place man yeah keep your, keep your distance from the trees they just fucking hit you yeah see that's back yeah. when that's back when runescape like was hella magical i mean yeah 
you'd go around and you'd find something. I, I just remember like seeing like the magnet or what, or like whatever the thing is in that room that you can't open when you first enter Drainer Manor. Like there's like a- Yeah, where the skeleton's in there? Yeah, or like a poison yeah. or a magnet's in there or something, yeah. or like the tube is, whatever the thing is called. I haven't done that close yeah. in ages, but I just remember thinking like, oh man, if I could get in there and if I could get that, I bet I, I bet that would sell for a fortune. And I remember yeah. like- Varrock West Bank, like if I could somehow, like there's got to be a way to be able to enter this gate. Like there has to be a way. And I would yep. just theorize in, you know, elementary school. I'm like fucking fourth or fifth grade, like just thinking like, how could I get a key to enter there? Like maybe I have to like talk to a banker and go through a certain dialogue to like make it so I can get the key. I just remember yeah, I was so obsessed with these little things that you just... <laughs> yeah it was just like i mean for me i think it took someone at school to be like yeah you know you don't have to reset your account right you can just walk out the back door and i was like <laughs> nah and then he showed me that afternoon and he was like yeah and then you know took me to the the fish poisoning the the well and shit yeah yeah i was like oh my god that's yeah. all i had to do the whole this is time. back this is back before we even knew what a google search was and there probably wasn't even any yeah. information online anyway i mean just what are you supposed yeah, to look for not. in 2003 2004 like pfft. The thought of Googling wasn't really there. It was just, yeah, load up RuneScape and then spend three hours every night in this fucking building trying to get out of it. <laughs> Dude, I remember sitting by Aubrey's magic shop in Varrock, in the in the ghetto of Varrock, and just killing thieves. I would kill the level yep. 16 thief. That was my training method. I remember, I remember getting to level 40 attack and seeing that I could equip rune. And I remember buying a rune sword, just a normal rune sword. And I thought mm -hmm. I was a motherfucking badass. Yep. I was a battle axe guy. We would always rush, every time I made a new account, rush 30 attack, get the Addy battle axe on Port Sarum, and then we would game. And <laughs> turn, then like today, that's like the most fucking retarded thing to do. Like, <laughs> why, why would you get a battle axe, <laughs> you fucking idiot? Back then, it was like, that's it. We're gaming, boys. Let's go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Start <Dude>. donking things. <laughs> Dude, I, I remember, um, yeah, there, there were some really good times. Uh, 2006 was really amazing, though. Like, this is back yeah. when, you know, I had siblings. So, we, we eventually fought over the computer so much that our parents yeah. limited our computer time to one hour. Mm-hmm. So my one hour, and my dad like installed a program on the computer that actually logged off after an hour. And the, the only way to, uh, listen, if there's a will, there's a way. So I think I've told this on a previous cast, but there was a way to make the program stop. And how you did it was you just started clicking on every fucking desktop app possible as soon as you have one yep. minute left. And it literally just froze the computer and it would, free, it would <laughs> freeze that whole like shutdown thing. Hell yeah. And then after like, you know, 25 minutes of the computer finally cooling off, then you close out of every program and then you have unlimited time. So uh, whenever Fuck my yeah. dad was out of town, I'd fucking pull that shit. But um, Fuck yeah. dude, <laughs> house parties, this is back when like house parties were like a big thing. And yeah. Could, oh, man. Like, I never I, had membership. My dad used to play RuneScape. And turn, in this day and age, man, he's a motherfucking scammer. Holy shit. He had like... <laughs> So, he told me he'd get me membership if I got 99 crafting. <laughs> Holy so shit! Is, yeah, I'm that motherfucker. We, we didn't realize how long that would take at the time, but yeah. I'm killing cows, and then I'm banking <laughs> them in our grid, and then I'm tanning them, and then I'm sitting there making hard labor bodies. No, I'm looking at Bruin no. HQ, like, I've got 300,000 left to go. I, got to, I, w I want to say I got into the 70s before I was like, nah, fuck this. But he would, like, he would have membership, and so he, he'd like see me and my brother, brother playing it. He's like, oh, what's this? So we'd go to school and um, he would fucking jump on. We'd come home that day. He's like level 40 attack, defense and strength, just killing cows all day. I'm like, you, you just killed cows. He's like, yeah, spent eight hours killing cows. I'm like, and nothing else. He's like, nut. And he's just got all these stats and like our minds were blown because he Holy. Know how high his stats Because we'd just walk around and just like harass people in game. Yeah, yeah. Doing our stats. Or like kill, like too. yeah, just kill a few cows and then like rest. Basically, yeah, like oh man, that it. was a lot. <laughs> yeah, and like he, he would get membership, and then the uh, the Ardone mine outside of it, like with the the iron and the yeah, yeah, coal yeah. out of the um, Legends Guild, he'd get us to mine that. And I'm pretty sure it was for every one thousand coal we mined, he would give us, I want to say two hundred k gold or something. Mm. 
for our accounts because he had heaps of money. And then eventually it was like he'll buy membership if we mine like 5,000 coals. I can't remember how much, but it was like, <laughs> yeah, that, that was a motherfucking scam today. Like, holy shit. I would, like, instead of paying my account, I would just sit there mining coal on his. Didn't think to, mo- I think you couldn't technically multi log back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was just like, I would just spend that 200k on shit. Like, he finished a clue scroll, and instead of giving me money, he gave me a Zamorak plate skirt. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. Got a Zamorak plate skirt. I went straight to the wilderness. I was like, I'm going to fight some motherfucker and laugh at them because they don't get my plate skirt. I The first time I saw someone with, with the plate skirt on, I I clicked him so fast, the, the skull above my head and everything, and I was typing like, you don't get my skirt, fuck you, I win. And then it was another one of those moments where as soon as, I, as, soon as I'm one hit, I'm like, oh, fuck, I sculled dead lost the skirt instantly he comes in 20 minutes later where's the plate skirt uh, <laughs> I, look, uh probably in the bank like he's just like you fucking lost it didn't you i'm like yeah it's like you're a fucking idiot <laughs> yeah it was just <laughs> like oh God. yeah Dude. i was just doing <laughs> dumb shit man <laughs> those are the fucking best days i remember getting scammed out of 100k mm-hmm. a spinach troll, and a muddy key and I, <laughs> some guy, some fucking jerk, you know, had had that little, little like West Verrock Bank scam going on. It was like buying spinach roll 100K and then another guy across the way is like selling spinach roll 100K or 50K yeah. or whatever. So yeah. I ended up buying a spinach roll for 100K and I, I, I thought it was worth like, he said it was worth a mil or like potentially, yeah. you know, if, if you could get a good buyer. So I would walk around this fucking bank and people would be like, oh, bank sale 100K. And I'd put up a fucking spinach roll. And then I'd have to like fucking convince the person that it's actually worth 100K because somebody else told me it was. Um, yeah, like, get the fuck out of here, dude. And then I got scammed because somebody was like, uh, oh, yeah, pl- we're playing a trust game. And, uh, of course, I follow this train up to Verrock Castle. And uh, we go up the staircase and everything, and there's like seven of us up there. And he's like, "All right, guys, like trade me your most valuable shit, and then you gotta trust me, and then I'll trade you everything back and more." And uh, so obviously he had his friends in on it, and so he's like trading his friends, like, "Oh my gosh, he's trustworthy, like trusted." And then I fucking put up my hundred k, and then he's like, "Do you have any more?" And I was like, "Yeah," and then then I put up my spinach roll and my muddy key. And th- I mean, this took I'm just like a year to collect. Like a hundred k was just yeah, I was grinding my ass money. off to get that. And I gave I gave him it, and then he accepted the trade. And he didn't just log out; he just ignored my ass for the next fifteen minutes as I just begged. I was literally sobbing at the computer, and I'm just fucking spamming the keyboard like, "Please, man, please." And of course, my computer time's running out, and so uh, my dad just like rips me off of the computer, and I'm just in tears for the rest of the night. Yeah. Like, fuck me! Can we, just touch, can we touch on the fact that when he said, "Do you have any more?" You put up a spinach fucking roll and a muddy <laughs> key, yeah. and that was it. As if that was fucking anything. He would have been like, uh, "The thing okay. is, is, like, the thing is, like, there there was something to be said about you know 2004, 2005, where like it, you." You really could just have any rare item and just say it's Absolutely. that price. And there's just, I mean, yeah. there's a market of 100,000 nine-year-olds that just will believe it. So yeah. it technically could be worth whatever you wanted. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He would have just been like, this guy is a fucking donkey. <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking spinach roll. <laughs> I, I remember like right after, like the, the next day I was so fucking mad that I went on the game and I just tried to start scamming people, but I had literally like no expertise in it whatsoever. Uh, I did the same. As soon as you get scammed, you're like, I've got a scam now because it worked. And then you're just trying to scam people and you have no fucking luck. And you're like, how? Did ev- everyone knows it now. It's too late. You're trying to jump on a trend that like just, I know. <laughs> only I mean, you would fall for. Yeah. You got like a nine year old brain going. You're like, how do I scam mm-hmm. somebody? You're trying to think it's just, this is not working. So I just ended up yeah. just moving on. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Still lives in our heads rent free though every day. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> so what? What about uh, like a recent memory? Like what's been like your favorite recent old school memory? Um. Shit. I I want to say. I don't even know if anything big has happened on the hardcore like big enough to 
call it. I mean, my, my most recent memory that I've really enjoyed was literally three three days ago where I, I did a deathless cox on this hardcore. It's only 103 combat, no Dragon Ball Hammer or anything. I was quite proud of it. It's like oh, yeah. I was dragon skimming the melee hand and DDSing it and using the new scepter. That new scepter from Path of Glory is like a game changer for mid level irons. It just like. If you can do Cox, it opens the door to so much more damage. Because then you can have Thoros now as well. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, I think just... Um, yeah, I, I, I mean... I think actually, like... Because so my first old school RuneScape account, I, I did bot. I, I got to 99... No. I got to 97 Hunter. And I was like... Fuck this. So I bought the rest of 99 because it was just too, too much. You grind it to 97, <laughs> yeah. legit. And then, you, oh my God. Yeah. And then I was like, it's doing red chains. I was like, dude, this is taking too long. I'm going to bot it. So I downloaded a bot, got to 99, and then I went and did agility and I botted Varrock Rooftop and then it got banned. And it was banned for like five years. They unbanned it the other, the, like two years ago, or last mm. year. Um, but since then, I've played 100% legitimately. Um, like I've never like bought or sold gold. Um, I've not like had to dabble. The only time I did like any staking was like if a viewer was like, "Oh, here's twenty mil if you want to stake for me," and I was like, "Okay," but I'm not putting my money in. And if you lose it, it's your, your fault. Like yeah. purely just for content sake. Um, so I've tried to be a, a pretty legit player um, for the most part, and I think just that in general, like b being on that end of the the game, from what I can see, from what I see other people do, like I. I I'm just quite proud of that in general. Just my overall, like, yeah, the the way I, I handle the game and the way I go about it. I feel like I, I can do like any content in the game I want to. Like, there's no, I I don't feel like I'm I'm locked uh, out of it behind like skill, uh, maybe just gear on certain accounts. But yeah, the gym team that we've got, the the main gym team is like fucking strong. We've got like a really good fucking bank. We're not ranked one of the high scores, but we're probably like the if you were to have a gear if you were to have a choice of a gear team you'd probably pick ours just for the the gear and shit that we've got is like really fucking end game um which i don't think many game teams have that are still prestige at least like so we can't still raid or whatever with other players so we just do it all between us that's cool so i'm quite i'm quite proud of that account and that team um yeah that's mostly it i've also like picked up pk really well this year like i've got several hundred wins in lms over like six months or something as oh, opposed yeah. to never being able to get one like last year so yeah yeah no it's, uh, lms is really cool because like most yep. people that start have fucking are clueless like i was yeah but, and then you get then you pick it up good. Then, yeah yeah when you have a good fight with someone at the end like it's annoying the bots are great because it keeps the game moving but it's annoying when it's only bots but yeah. when you have a good fight when you're both geared at the end and it's like down to the last few bits of food it's like it's fine even if i lose i'm not super mad i'm like damn that's, that was a good fight yep totally it's it's so addicting too i remember like a couple oh, years back yeah. i i would stay up until 7 a.m mm -hmm. just running elmas i'm like jesus yeah. i literally can't stop i'm so addicted I, I would get so mad though as well like i just would splash or i just would like have bad iron like absolute shitters people would just be venge and rag bolting and fucking me and i'm and like i'm attacking them off prey and not hitting and i would get so fucking mad but like i would spend like send almost entire streams just lmsing just because I couldn't get out of there. It was like an addiction. I had to stop. <laughs> I know. It's a really uh, addictive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, King Condor, um, before we wrap things up, I want to ask you for mm. three shout outs from pretty much anybody in the community. So if there's anybody that you feel like deserves a little shout out, feel free. Um, I I will give a shout out to like Rebel Montana personally. Like obviously with his, his tweet that he made is... Mm -hmm. uh, is is a good laugh but he he is actually just like a, an overall big supporter and and uh just just a, a great guy in the community alone so yeah big shout out to rebel um i'll give a shout out to yeah Jono as well just being a, a fucking top bloke with his content and pull, pulling let's let's be honest most of the weight on the hardcore group team while i sit here fishing and cooking i'm sure he'll forgive me um when i start pulling some strings and then just a shout out in general to my community like everyone um that yeah just supports me sticks by me uh through even the most insanely dumb shit that i do and say but yeah just uh in general 
the people that come by, and even if they, I mean, even the haters, you know, you guys are just as good because I love it. If I have the opportunity to wind you up, I will do it. So yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, this this was this was awesome, man. This is a treat. This is really fun. Yeah. Had had a few uh, good I, laughs. So I appreciate. Yeah, you. no, I, I really appreciate it. It was um yeah when when you messaged me, I was actually like really excited for it. So I'm glad we got to do it before I do this subathon too, because otherwise I would have been waiting. I could have been waiting two days. Could be waiting two weeks. Who knows? But... Yeah, or two years. Who knows? It's oh, uncapped, fuck, right? Yeah. Ima- can you That's imagine? It. Like it actually went on for a full year. Like you just uh, no fucking breaks, but you just I... actually made like six figures. Well, at least the the streams coming to Christmas then. At <laughs> least, but yeah, fuck that. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, no, but uh, yeah. Hope I'm I'm wishing you the best of luck on your subathon. Hopefully it goes well. Thank you. I'll, I'll pop in it. here and there. Yeah, sounds good, man. Um, but yeah, thank you for, uh, your time tonight. And for those listening down in the description of the video, if you guys want to check out King Condor's YouTube, uh, do you want your Twitch linked as well? Or are you just exclusively YouTube nah, at this I, point? I won't go live on the Twitch. Yeah. There's no point. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Thank you, King Condor. Once again, this is awesome. Excellent. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right, guys. If you want to... Uh, support the podcast there's also a patreon link down in the description you can also now support on youtube directly so if you want to join the membership the prices are still the same on patreon and youtube and uh, you get your name on the title screen so thank you guys for listening and there will be a cast this next week and then i believe there's one more before twitchcon so there will be a bye week uh, toward the end of the month but um yeah anyway thank you guys all for listening and we'll catch you in the next one peace